other obligations. But, uh, you know, when you think about this, I mean, it's uh, it's you've got the Division Two playoffs at hand, and the conditions are terrible. <laughs> and uh, But if you look at it, it really favors the Reddies in the aspect of the way they've run the football has been – instrumental to mo most of their wins this year. Yeah, and they've got the GAC Offensive Player of the Year at running back. Yeah. You know, this is uh, the fourth straight time they've had the GAC Offensive Player of the Year. Of course, we're talking about uh, a running back this time, which yeah. is much different than we saw three years ago. Now you're looking at a, a conditions in a game that really favor a team that likes to force turnovers, which we know the Reddies are very good at. In fact, leading the nation in interceptions, going against one of the best passing offenses. The, f the conditions favor the Reddies, but when it comes to the talent on the field in terms of the offensive talent, we know that in Poirier State they've really got some guys that can fly. Wide receiver, you're looking at two guys who are leading uh, their conference in receptions, also in yards, and their quarterback, who is a Harlan Hill finalist. How about that? The Reddy's facing two straight Harlan Hill finalists in consecutive weeks. Yeah, and, and when you look at Emporia State, this is a team that comes in 10-2 and two on the season. They were 9-2 and two in the MIAA, which was uh, good for second in the conference but behind Northwestern Missouri State, and that's one of the top teams in the country right now. Yeah, and number fact, one. Number one in the uh, in Super Region 3. And uh, this is a team that was 6-0 and at home, but they were 4-2 and on the road. And one of their big road wins was last week as they beat Minnesota State Mankato 51-49 in the first round of playoffs. And really, when that when you look at that game, it came down to a, a final field goal to beat Mankato. And, and this is a team in Emporia State who – much like the Reddies, they picked up their first playoff win yeah. last week. This is their fourth ever playoff game. And, uh, I mean, just the similarities are there across the board for both teams. And a big win for the Reddies, too, because it was the first win for the conference in the playoffs since its inception. So you're looking at two teams in uh, – in a situation they're a little unfamiliar with, and the conditions couldn't be worse for this situation for either team. You know, you talk to a lot of coaches about, uh, hey, coach, how do you think the conditions are going to, you know, uh, work out in this game for your team? And they always say, well, it's going to be uh, for both sides. But here's what you can expect for today, and in any college football game that sees conditions like this, you're going to expect more drops than usual, and the ball is probably going to be coming out a little bit more than you typically see. The running backs are going to have to secure that football before absorbing any contact today because it could pop out at any time. You know, this is a an Emporia State team that is almost a mirror image of what Henderson State was two years ago in that Henderson State was a team that uh, all they did was rely on the pass behind the arm of Kevin Rogers. They, they threw the ball. They were very limited in the running game because of the, the great receivers and the passing game that they had. That's what Emporia State does. Yeah. The, the, the running game for Emporia State is, is, I mean, it's good, but it's not great. When you look at them as a team rushing the football, they're averaging 146 yards per game at three and a half point or three and a half uh, yards per rush. This is just not a dominant rushing team. Their leading rusher is Antonio Brown, who's run the ball for 586 yards and five touchdowns this year. But like we talked about with the passing game, Brent Wilson is their quarterback. He's thrown for 3,857 yards, 39 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. He's got a completion percentage of 65%. He currently ranks number two in the country in quarterbacks in the entire country and uh, it'll be interesting to see how he matches up with this ready defense who has intercepted the ball 27 times this year and has really forced good quarterbacks to look really bad in ball games. Well you look at the receivers he's throwing to he's spreading the ball out between three guys to keep an eye on today one of them Kowalski Irvin who has 75 receptions 1100 yards and 11 touchdowns he's 10th in receiving yards in the NCAA he's also uh, 21st in receiving touchdowns. And then you've got Mitchell Foote, who ranks 67th in the NCAA in receiving yards, 837. But he's got 12 touchdowns on the season. And finally, you got uh, Morris Williams, who averages 16.3 yards per catch. Pretty impressive group of, of receivers that he's got to throw to. This is the first meeting between Emporia State and Henderson State in football. They didn't meet in baseball last year in which the Reddies won that ball game in the playoffs, put Emporia State out, and then we all know what happened with the Reddy baseball team. They went on their magical run all the way to the College World Series. Let's hope that happens again today where the Reddy football team puts out Emporia State on a run to maybe a national title game. We've got much more coming up on the Domino's pregame show as Hunter Lively sat down with Tim Llewellyn, who's going to be getting a start today at linebacker. And uh, Tim Llewellyn, a guy who um, was the GAC freshman D1 
Defensive Player of the Year two years ago, and going to be glad to sit down and talk with him to hear what he has to say about today's game. We've got a lot coming up uh, around the Super Region 3. We'll keep you updated on scores going on. Uh, in fact, when you look around Super Region 3, the only other game going on is number four, Humboldt State at number one, Northwestern Missouri. The winner of this game will play the winner of that game yep. uh, next weekend. So if the Reddies were to win today, uh, and Humboldt State were to beat Northwestern Missouri, the Reddies would have another home game here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. But if uh, Northwestern Missouri it was heavily to, favored, yes, yes, if they were to win that game and Henderson wins today, then uh, the Reddies will be headed up to Missouri for next weekend's ball game. But as we said, we have a lot more coming up next on the Domino's pregame show. Remember, while listening to Ready Football, you can order a Domino's pizza by calling 870-246-3131 or order online at dominoes.com. When we come back, Hunter Lively sits down with Tim Llewellyn. It's all coming up next on the Henderson State Sports Network.
I mean, this is probably the most unselfish team I've ever been a part of, and it's a it's just a great great experience. Well, tell us about some of your hobbies and favorite things to do outside of football and during your spare time, maybe in the off season. Well, I just like to hang out with my fa family and friends. I mean, that's really all I can do other than football and pre preparation for everything that has to do with the off season. I mean, I'm, it's either hanging out with the friends or family or training. <laughs> so, or I, can, I mean, I go to my ranch, fish, hunt a little bit, ride the four wheels a little bit. I mean, it's just it's all good. Just have fun a little bit after. after during the off season, take a little break, but really what it comes down to, what I want to do is get better, and that's that's to contribute to a football, my, my football career. Well, what's your major, and what do you plan to do with it after graduation? I'm a communications major, so I, I chose that because it's a very broad, broad subject, and I can go do a lot of things, but as soon as the season's over, I'm going to buckle down and continue to train and try and see where my football career continues to take me. I'm not set on anything right now, so it's just really open, free reign. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just kind of going to be prepared for whatever opportunity comes my way, so that's all. Well, Tim, good luck out there today, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, man, go ready. Let's get this win. Stay tuned, as there's much more to come in the Domino's pregame show as we count you down to kickoff right here on the Henderson State Sports Network. Do you have an idea that you would like to see on a T-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, okay, which will allow you to work with an artist to help you create your t-shirt. Yeah. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Oh. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street. we we'll call 246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. My name is Ruth Rusi. I'm a retired teacher. I'm 91 years old, and this is how I live united. I say retired, but not really. Once a week, I read books to children as part of United Way's education program. Reading to a child creates links between language and literacy. It creates a bond between grown-up and child. And believe it or not, it prepares them for a better academic future. Oh, we read about frogs and flies and pigs with wings, all sorts of juicy stuff. It's a joy to watch all those little faces. I figure I have the time and they have the need. And I've always believed that if we're not here to help each other, then what are we here for, really? My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. This is the sound of salmonella gyrating on your undercooked chicken. Yeah, I bet you were doing the number one. And it looks like mom might be taking it out a little early. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. So use a thermometer to cook each type of meat to the right temperature. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show on the Ready Sports Network. It's time to open up the Ready Twitter feed and invite all fans to get involved using the hashtag I'm Ready for our weekly look at the Ready Fan tweets and questions. Here's RJ Hawk. We are about 40 minutes till the start of the second round of the NCAA uh, Division II second round playoff game between Henderson State and Emporia State. I'm RJ Hawk, and now it's time for everybody's favorite segment. Ready fan tweets, and remember, if you want to get in on the action, you can tweet me at RJ Hawk. Phil Halson's not here today, so you can uh, tweet Chris at Chris Kane 7 and always use that hashtag I'm ready when doing so. And our first question today comes from Rich, and he says, guys, the rain that we've received here in Central Arkansas today, how and actually, Rich, it's actually Southwest. Rich is calling from uh, tweeting from Little Rock. Oh uh, yeah. But uh, what's no? What's that going to do for today's ball game? Well, the good thing is is the fact that uh, the Reddies play on that AstroTurf field, and when you're just looking at the field right now, it's holding water really well. You can see that it's all draining off to the sidelines, but you don't see him puddling in the no. middle of the field right now. No, it looks it looks like the field itself is going to hold up much better than uh, maybe the ball. You know, the yeah. ball is, is certainly going to be uh, difficult for a lot of receivers to bring in. It'll be interesting to see how the quarterbacks – place the ball because if there are any balls that typically you know might just get away from them a little bit and go a little high 
sometimes, you know, in a dry game, a receiver can come down, make a pretty spectacular catch. I don't see many spectacular catches over the head being made today. It's just natural for the ball to slip right through. But the receivers on the Emporia State side are super talented, so we'll see how they're able to adjust because that's the biggest thing is their passing game, RJ, is their bread and butter. How can they adjust to the conditions to make it still work? All right, that's our next question coming from Matt. He wants to know, what does Henderson State have to do today to slow down the passing attack of Emporian? And that's twofold when you look at it. They just have to keep playing coverage like they've done all yeah. season long. But secondly, I think that the rain's going to play a big factor in the passing game. We're sitting here watching Emporia State right now uh, sling the ball all over, all over the yard here in the pregame. But you got to think, Phil, uh, Chris, whenever – uh, you, that ball starts to get a little bit wetter and uh, the, the conditions are, are a little bit different. That ball is going to not come out as easy as, as what it has for uh, both quarterbacks later in this ball game. Yeah, you know, they don't ask Dallas Hardison to do a whole lot on the inter, on the Henderson side. Um, as long as they stick to the running game and really just let Cole run free today, I think that's the big thing that they've got to do is just focus on getting him the ball as many touches as possible. Even maybe with some just some passes out to the flats. You know, just get him out in some space and let him work a little bit. I think that's going to be the uh, the thing that Henderson State should focus on in this game is making sure they get qu the coal the ball as much as possible. Our next question comes from Justin, and he wants to know, guys, we got injured a lot last week. Uh, what is the status of some of the guys playing today? And <laughs> you're exactly no, right. He's, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a, a lot of injuries on this uh, ready team, and the, the good thing is a lot of the backups have gotten a lot of playing time, and I, and I can go over uh, today. The Rays will be without Darian Gray, who last week uh, broke his jaw on a punt return, mm. so Darian will not be there. Joseph Snap and Mark Chouse will be returning punts for the Reddies today. Also, uh, the Reddies on defense lost Ilian Petrosian to an ACL tear, and so he'll be out. Uh, Tim Llewellyn will be in. Uh, we'll be switching out with him and Donovan McLeod. Uh, Montana Fuller, uh, he's going to be out with a knee injury. Charles Korn, who's got a lot of starts this year for the Reddies, he'll be uh, put into that right guard spot. And then you've got bumps and bruises across the board, but those are your significant injuries so far from last week's game. Yeah, I think about Tim Llewellyn that you've mentioned, though, is the fact that he's had playing experience yeah. even early on in his career, just battling those injuries. And it seems like, from what we hear from Coach, is that he'll be ready to play today, which will definitely definitely help fill in that spot. And uh, that's going to do it for Ready Fan Tweets. That's all we've got for today. It's a quick segment, Chris. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of folks. Uh, yeah, I imagine a lot of folks are trying to battle the rain right now. We do see folks piling in to here to Carpenter Haygood Stadium as uh, we've talked about it and we'll continue to talk about it. It is a driving rainstorm that is uh, coming through. Luckily, though, uh, it doesn't look like it's producing any lightning or thunder. Nope. So uh, no. if it's just rain, we will not have any delays in today's ball game. It'll just uh, just be a sloppy day out here at Carpenter Haygood. You know, you mentioned how the rain might have uh, today's game. Watch for this too. Punts. Punts is going to be big because I've seen in both warm-ups and right now, uh, I've seen a few of the punters struggle to grasp the ball on the snap yeah. and the drop. So we're going to have to wait and see how that might affect the punting for both teams today. And a nice crowd of uh, fans have come from Kansas, from Emporia, Kansas, to cheer on their team here at Governor Haygood. So we're going to have a decent crowd on this rainy day for the second round of the NCAA playoffs. We are 35 minutes away from the opening kick when we come back. Uh, Hunter Lively sat down with Sean Jones, the athletic director at Henderson State, to talk about today's matchup and what's going on on the campus of Henderson State football. It's all coming up next on the Henderson State Sports Network. Okay, forest animals, today is a new day. Kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow. Yes? Have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. Okay, River. Dude. How's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. Perfect for a little riverside shoeless relaxation. Ah, good. Owl, you hear? Of course. Who, who's asking? I am. Look, you know the drill. Sleep during the day, scare the kids at night. Perfect. I love my job. Uh, Oak Tree? What's up? Still in the same place I left you last year. That's what I like. Consistency. Well, it's not like I'm going anywhere for the next couple hundred years. I know. I love it. Uh, Turtle. Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Ugh, he's late every morning. You'd think you would have learned by now to leave the night before our meetings. Okay. Squirrel. Has anybody seen Mr. Mr. Squirrel? Yeah. The forest has been preparing just for you. Visit a forest near you today. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hello, I'm Phyllis Dills, Public Affairs Specialist for the Social Security Administration. 
I'd like to take a moment of your time to tell you about my Social Security, www.socialsecurity.gov slash my account. My Social Security is a new service that lets you set up an online account and gain quick access to the Social Security information you need the most. Use your account to get a copy of your Social Security statement, which includes your earnings record and estimates of your future retirement, disability, and survivor's benefits. If you already get Social Security, you can use My Social Security to view or print your benefit verification letter, check your benefit information, change your address and phone number, and much more. You'll be able to gain access to all your important Social Security information by simply creating a My Social Security account. So visit us today at www.socialsecurity.gov slash my account. That web address again is www.socialsecurity.gov slash my account. The Domino's pregame show continues on the Ready Sports Network with the AD's Corner for an update on events and Henderson State Athletics. Here's Athletic Director Sean Jones. Sean, it was an awesome moment last weekend as the Reddies picked up their first ever playoff win. And I know it had to be extremely special for you to be a part of history with this team. But just your thoughts on the victory over Sioux Falls. Well, I was just incredibly proud of our student athletes, Coach Maxfield, his staff, um, everybody really at Henderson who has played a part in the success of this program uh, over the course of many, many years. Um, you know, since joining the Great American Conference, the Reddies had been in a couple of playoffs and, and lost to very good teams in the first round, and, and other GAC teams had suffered defeats in the first round. So not only was it a historic uh, victory for Henderson State, first and foremost, it was also a great win for our league, I think, to show everybody that the GAC plays outstanding football and, and to have an, a very, very good Northern Sun team come down here and, and win, um, I think, speaks volumes about the caliber of our league and, and certainly of our program, but yes, it was definitely a special moment after the game with the kids and the coaches and everybody who's a part of our program um, to kind of take that next historic step, uh, getting an NCAA playoff win. The team celebrated the Thanksgiving holiday together on Thursday, and you can really tell that this is a tight-knit group that Scott Maxfield, Scott Maxfield has put together. As we heard from, from Tim Llewellyn earlier, he said that this team has been the closest group of brothers that he's experienced at HSU. And you can see it. You know, it's palpable when, you, when you're around the team. You know, this is a team that doesn't have any superstars, but this is a team that's 11 and 1, that won the conference by two games, won a playoff game, and now uh, here we are in the final 16 teams in the country. And really, I think it proves that uh, team beats talent when talent isn't a team. This is a team, and it's their collective talents together that have made this team successful. Tim's a great example of that, as are many other guys. Uh, in the program but you know Thursday was a special day first of all we talk often about the ready spirit and you know we had to feed 175 people when you talk about support staff and, and the players and the coaches and, and all the people around the program and um, you know I was just extraordinarily thankful on Thanksgiving to have so many of our donors and fans and, and folks in the campus community who brought desserts and side dishes uh, also very appreciative of Johnny Robinson and the staff of Aramark for providing a, a good portion of that meal and then many of our donors who helped us out um, to cover the meal. You know, it, it takes a team, as we said, to, to make these things happen. And, and it went beyond just the guys wearing the red jerseys um, to make Thanksgiving special. But it was a lot of fun to celebrate with those guys, in addition to our men's and women's basketball teams who were here. But um, certainly I was uh, very, very thankful and, and want to say thank you to, to all the people who helped out and, and brought items so that these kids who have been away from home for a long, long time I got to experience the Thanksgiving holiday together. You know, I told a friend of mine this week, Hunter, that when you've got teams on campus on Thanksgiving, it speaks to the success of the program. And, and I'm hopeful that we continue to feed our football team on Thanksgiving for many more years. But it was a special day. Well, here in about 30 minutes, the Reddies will take on Emporia State, a team that really likes to move the ball through the air. But this Reddy secondary has been huge over the last few weeks, however, and this should make for an exciting matchup today. Yeah, what do we have now, 26? I believe it's 27. 27 interceptions on the season. Uh, obviously a great group going against a high-octane offense. I mean, I think Minnesota State Mankato was ranked number two in the country last week, and Emporia State goes up into the cold and scores 51 on them. You know, here's the deal. We're, we're in the final 16 teams in the country right now. Um, everybody's good. Emporia State is good. They've got one of the best quarterbacks in the country, Brent Wilson. Uh, they've got incredible receivers. They've got a fast and athletic and talented defense. A very, very good football team. But again, as I've been asked many times this week, what do you think? 
Um, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't go against the Reddies. This is a tough blue collar team in the image of head coach Scott Maxfield. I know they're excited for the opportunity. Weather can certainly play a factor in this game today. Uh, obviously, the Reddies are a team that likes to pound it on the ground um, and very tough defensively. Um, certainly, Emporia State, excellent team coming from the MIAA. But uh, I'm looking forward to this game. I think it should be a great one. And I want to thank everybody who is making their way out to the stadium, folks who are in the stadium. I know it's Thanksgiving weekend. I uh, also want to thank all the people who are here to work on Thanksgiving weekend. But again, uh, it is my expectation that we play uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. You know, as I've told many people, Hunter and you included, I didn't come down here to take this job two years ago to lose. I came down here to win. And certainly we have a winner in Scott Maxfield and, and this football program that he's built. And uh, let's hope this continues. But I know we'll have a great game today. Well, that'll wrap things up for this week's AD Corner with Athletic Director Sean Jones. And Sean, as always, Thanks for stopping by to get with us. All right, Hunter, let's get us a win today. When we come back, we'll have much more on the Domino's pregame show as we count you down to second round playoff action between the Reddies and Hornets right here on the Henderson State Sports Network. The state's leading care is right here in the comfort of your own community. Baptist Health Medical Center Arcadelphia is a full service hospital. Your state of the art technology is united with highly qualified physicians and the most quality nursing staff in the region. From major surgery to minor injuries, we care for you because we're your neighbor. And we're backed by Baptist Health, Arkansas's most comprehensive and respected care network. Baptist Health Medical Center, Arkadelphia, your community hospital. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. It's like tiny nails in the air broke my lungs. I start to cough. Sometimes I... My parents have to take me to the hospital. Today, one out of 13 children suffer from some form of asthma, accounting for nearly one-third of all emergency room visits. I feel like I'm choking. It's kind of like an elephant is on my chest. A little whistle sound comes out when I breathe. But while your child may suffer from asthma, asthma doesn't have to make your child suffer. There are simple ways you can prevent your child's next attack. To learn more, log on to www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. I feel like a fish with no water. Brought to you by the EPA, the Ad Council, and this station. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? No! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show on the Ready Sports Network. Now for a look around the Great American Conference with standings and today's schedule, here's Phil Elson. Well, Phil's got the day off today, and uh, we will still go around the, the uh, conference as well as uh, Division II football. We'll start with Super Region 3, and uh, the other matchup going on today is number four, Humboldt State, taking on number one, Northwest Missouri, and that game is set to start at uh, 1 o'clock today, along with this uh, Super Region 3 game starting at 1 o'clock. But other games going on? that have started out of Super Region 2. You've got Valdosta State taking on West Georgia, and currently West Georgia holds a 17-7 lead at halftime. Also in Super Region 2, you've got Tuskegee and North Alabama, and that game currently in the second quarter, North Alabama holding a 10-7 lead over Tuskegee. We're looking around Re Super Region 4, you've got Cal State Pe Pueblo starting at 1 o'clock. They're taking on Midwestern State, and then also in that Super Region 4, Grand Valley currently at the half leads Ferris State by a score of 24 to 10. Also looking around the Great American Conference, we've got some teams playing today as uh, bowl games are happening. And uh, when you look at the Heart of Texas Bowl, which is in uh, Coppers Cove, Texas, Eastern New Mexico is taking on Arkansas Tech today. That ball game is scheduled to start at 6 o'clock. While down in Texarkana, Texas, uh, excuse me, Texarkana, Arkansas, it's the Live United Texarkana Bowl as Central Oklahoma takes on Southwestern Oklahoma State. That game is already underway, and uh, looks like that game started at 12 o'clock. We haven't got an update on that score just yet. So either way, we're about 24 minutes away from the opening, opening round game of the second 
round in the NCAA playoffs as Emporia State takes on Henderson State. Both teams have cleared the field as the rain is continuing to fall even harder than what it was before. We're going to have this all day today as uh, we play today's game here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. When we come back, I had a, sit, a chance to sit down with Henderson State head coach Scott Maxfield to talk about today's matchup and last week's first round win against Sioux Falls. That's all coming up next on the Henderson State Sports Network. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi, what do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, uh, that's easy. Better restaurants. And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? This place? Uh, more ice cream trucks. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Um, can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. Oh, that's way better. I know that you mention it. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. This is the sound of E. coli splashing around in raw hamburger juice on your cutting board. And it looks like Mom just put the tomatoes and onions on there, too. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. So always separate raw meat from vegetables on two cutting boards. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Every day, we go about our lives driven by routine. Our vision clouded by the very normalcy we take for granted. Countless victims of human trafficking walk among us, invisible. It's time to open our eyes. The Blue Campaign provides a unified voice for those who combat human trafficking, whether it's forced labor, domestic servitude, or the sex trade. Learn what you can do to help by visiting dhs.gov slash blue campaign. The Domino's pregame show rolls along on the Ready Sports Network. And now with an in-depth look at the Ready Football Program with head coach Scott Maxfield, here's R.J. Hawk. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show. It's now time for a weekly conversation with head coach Scott Maxfield. And coach, first and foremost, congratulations on last week's win. It was the first playoff win in school history. And uh, it just must must have felt nice to get that monkey off your back, I guess. Well, it was. uh, Went out. Kids played extremely hard. Uh, you know, we uh, we uh, played a very good team in Sioux Falls, and uh, we, we were fortunate to come out with the victory, but uh, proud of the way we performed. Kids uh, prepared well leading up to the game, and I thought we executed pretty well throughout the game. Is it fair to say this team's playing its best football right now? Well, we've uh, we've kind of hit a stride. Uh, it's hard to say if we've improved a lot over the last couple of weeks, but uh, we are playing solid. We've eliminated a lot of mistakes that we have made, uh, you know, somewhat during the season. So, overall, I'm pleased with the performance and uh, with the attitude. Uh, we're pretty hungry. The kids come out. It's a good, good, good group of kids to coach. The running game did exactly what you wanted last week as you guys ran for 174 yards. In fact, it worked so well as you guys didn't really have to throw the ball that much. It's been nice to have the ability to wear down a defense with that running game. Well, that was you know, kind of our main thing going in. We wanted really to try to control the ball, move the chains, um, you know, try to rest our defense as much as possible because they did have a very explosive offense. They came into the game averaging, I think, 41 or 42 points a game. So, uh, you know, we tried to you know, do our part offensively and uh, score some points and, you know, try to get ahead of those guys early and make them press. And uh, we were, uh, you know, successful doing that. This week you guys get another home game as you're hosting Emporia State. And once again you're facing another very talented quarterback. What do you need to do to slow him down? Well, we've got to change our coverages up. Uh, you know, he's really hard to get pressure on because he throws the ball extremely uh, fast. He's not going to hold it in his hands. They, they do a lot of quick passing games. So very similar to our offense in 2012, 2013. Uh, you know, sometimes you're better off dropping eight guys coverage was uh, as opposed to bringing pressure just because their quarterback is uh, a good player. He reads defense as well and he'll throw the ball hot and get it out of his hands. So, you know, we just got to try to make them drive the field and uh, hopefully force them into some mistakes. 
It's supposed to be a rainy day today, and you know, a lot of times people say if you're a passing team, that doesn't work into your advantage. Do you see this maybe being a, a factor that uh, could help you guys out? Well, it just matters exactly what it's doing at game time. If it's uh, you know a torrential downpour, then it's going to be hard to throw the football. But uh, if it's just drizzle or light rain, you know, I don't think it'll really affect uh, a whole lot. Uh, it might make it a little bit more difficult, but, uh, you know, we, we've got to play in it just like they do, so uh, I don't know if there's an advantage one way or the other. Just looking at the numbers, it just seems like this team struggles a little bit in stopping the run. Is that what you've seen on film? Well, they're playing a pretty much run-dominated league up there, so they don't see a whole lot of uh, wide-open spread-type offenses. In fact, they're one of probably the only uh, spread-type offenses in that league. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's just... Uh, you know, they have given up some yardage in the run game. Hopefully, uh, that, that trend will continue. What's your biggest concern with them on defense? Uh, defensively, they, they've got some, uh, you know, good players that are athletic. Uh, you know, they're, they're fast. But, you know, when you play second round of playoffs, you're going to play a good team. Uh, they proved that they're good because they went to Minnesota State and Cato, who have been ranked number one or two in the nation in the AFCA for pretty much all year. And, uh, you know, went up there to, to their home field and beat them. So, I know they're going to be a, uh, a good, great opponent. We saw a lot of injuries last week. Uh, what's the injury status look like for um, for this week? Well, it's, it's not really good. We, we lost more guys uh, than we've lost all year in one game. Uh, Dan Gray, a punt returner, broke his jaw. He's out uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, Ilya Petros and I started with a linebacker towards the MCL. He's out for the rest of the year. Uh, Montana Fuller towards the ACL. He's out for the rest of the year. Uh, Let's see, JoJo Grant, uh, backup offensive tackle, has got a uh, shoulder uh, AC joint separation. He's very limited. And uh, so uh, those are probably the primary ones. But, you know, it was a, it was a rough game uh, injury-wise. Probably the most we've had uh, up to this point. Hey, Coach, stay dry today and good luck. Thank you. That's Head Coach Scott Maxfield joining us on the Domino's pregame show. When Chris and I come back, we'll give you today's starting lineups as we're counting down to kickoff in the second round of the NCAA playoffs on the Henderson State Sports Network. You aspire. Dreams drive each of us. Whether you want to be an accountant or a teacher, a nurse or an artist, ambitions can become a reality at Henderson State University. We empower. At Henderson, we empower students with the tools to excel. We offer more than 70 majors, including the state's only four-year aviation program and a variety of academic support resources. In addition, we offer classes at the new Hot Springs Downtown Education Center. Hey, Hunter. You achieve. A student-centered focus makes Henderson a full Okay, buddy, we're going to come to you uh, after this back we did a lineup. I enjoy your successful career in life. To learn how Henderson can transform your aspirations into lifelong achievements, visit hsu.edu. The to win. brought to you by Hi, I'm Avina. I'm seven years old and I'm blind. I love gymnastics, piano, public speaking, and riding on a tour bike with my dad. You can help me live the life I want. Help Ravina and other blind people by making a tax-deductible donation of your used car, truck, or almost anything with wheels to the National Federation of the Blind. Your donation will help ensure a brighter future for blind children and adults. Just call 855-659-9314. That's 855-659-9314. Or visit carshelpingtheblind.org. That's carshelpingtheblind.org. We will arrange to have the donated vehicle picked up and provide you with a tax deductible receipt and if you know someone who is blind that can use our help email nfb at nfb.org well, this is not holding me back at all donate today Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show on the Ready Sports Network. We're counting down to the opening kickoff. Let's get back to the broadcast booth for today's starting lineups. We are 15 minutes away from the start of the second round of the NCAA playoffs between Emporia State and Henderson State. Let's go ahead and give you today's starting lineups. As first, it's for the Reddies. They come in 11 and 1 under Scott Maxfield, who's in his 11th season. He's 80 and 40 as a coach at Henderson State. He picked up his 100. His 110th win last week against Sioux Falls. That's counting all the Juco games that he coached in before coming to Henderson State. Your left tackle is going to be John Michael McGee, a junior, 6'4", 280 pounds out of Texarkana, Texas. 
at left guard, Lawrence Will Willis, a junior, 6'1", 330 pounds, from Houston, Texas. Today's center is going to be Corey Steidel, a sophomore, 6'1", 270 pounds, out of Alito, Texas. At right guard, Charles Korn, a sophomore, 6'4", 305 pounds, from San Antonio, Texas. And at right tackle, you've got Justin Carpenter, a sophomore, at 6'4", 290 pounds, from Lone Oak, Arkansas. Today's quarterback is Dallas Hardison, who is a junior at 5'10", 195 pounds, out of Bentonville, Arkansas. So far in the year, he's thrown for 2,827 yards, has a completion percentage of 63%, has thrown 29 touchdowns, or excuse me, 13 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. He's also run the ball a little bit this year, as uh, he's run the ball for over 500 yards rushing. Running back is going to be Jaquan Cole. He is the Great American Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He's rushed this year for 1,119 yards, eight touchdowns. He's a junior, 5'8", 185 pounds from Duncanville, Texas. Today's fullback is going to be Ryan McDonald, a senior, 5'10", 200 pounds out of Charleston, Arkansas. And your receivers, Joseph Snap, a senior, 195 pounder uh, from Van Buren, Arkansas. Javante Mack from Lufkin, Texas. He's a transfer from Sam Houston State, a senior, 5'8", 175 pounds. Mark Chouse, a senior, 5'11", 191 pounds from Garland, Texas, and Corey Chappelle, a senior, 5'7", 160 pounds from Rowlett, Texas. Now with today's lineups for Emporia State, here's Chris Kane. Oh, the Emporia State Hornets coming to this game with an overall record of 10-2. and They were 9-2 and in the MIAA, 4-2 on the road. Their head coach, Garen Higgins, is 52-49 and in his ninth season. Important to note, though, since the start of the 2010 season, He's 43-25, and 25, and he is coaching at his alma mater. This is their first meeting with Henderson State, and starting at left tackle, Kenneth Sellers, the senior, 6'3", 284, from Wichita, Kansas, at left guard, Jarrett Stashney, the junior, 6'4", 290 pounds, from Sanger, Texas. Then looking at their center, a sophomore, 6'322 pounds, out of Choctaw, Oklahoma, Jake Warheim. That right guard, a senior, 6'1", 331 pounds from Chicago, Illinois, Eric Pruitt. And Jordan McAdoo is a senior, 6'4", 282 from Piedmont, Oklahoma. The star of this offense, their quarterback, Brent Wilson, the MIAA Offensive Player of the Year. He's a senior, 6'1", 190 pounds from Ponca City, Oklahoma. He ranks second in all of NCAA Division II. And he is also a Harlan Hill finalist, passing for 3,800 yards completing 66% of his passes, 39 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions on the season. Looking at their running backs today, Antonio Brown getting the start at running back, a junior, 5'11", 187 pounds out of St. Louis, Missouri. Nick Oliver, the slot back, a sophomore, 6'5", 239 from Overland Park, Kansas. Taking a look at their wideouts, they've got three good ones. Kavaski Irvin, the senior, only 5'9", 180 pounds out of Mesquite, Texas. He leads the team in yards, though, with 1,100 on the season, and he is tied for the most catches. Mitchell Foote, a sophomore, 6'3", 186 pounds. He leads the team in touchdown receptions with 12. And Anthony Buffalo Meat, can't wait to call that name today, junior 6'2", 196 pounds from Lawrence, Kansas. Their tight end, Connor Thiroff, senior 6'4", 244 pounds from Marion, Kansas. We have a driving, I keep saying that because I was driving it. I don't think I. Mother think Nature. I, I don't think I've ever done a game with it raining this hard before, Chris Kane. I'm not going to let up anytime soon. It's no. going to be like this the entire broadcast. Yeah, I, I just can't. I, I'm sitting here. I was thinking during the break. I don't think I've ever witnessed a game with the rain this hard. Uh, but what both teams are going to have to deal with it is, uh, as Coach Maxwell always <laughs> always says, "Hey, we both have to deal with it." Don't you wish, or if you were a player, I'd almost wish. That it was snowing because at least it wouldn't be as wet as it is out there. Snow, a little, it's not as bad, just a little bit colder. But if you look at how cold it is out there, you're only talking about 8 to 10 degrees colder than it already is. Well, currently the temperature in Arkadelphia right now, 48 degrees. It feels like 45 with a north, northeast wind out of 8, uh, eight miles an hour out of the northeast. And uh, it's going to be raining all day. 100% chance of rain all the way through the night tonight. So uh, if you're coming to the game, make sure you bring that poncho. Make sure you bring that umbrella. Or do like the people to our left and just bring a whole tent set up in the stands uh, and uh, enjoy the game. 
as it's Emporia State taking on Henderson State in the second round of the NCAA playoffs. We are nine minutes away till the opening kickoff. When we come back, we will give you today's keys to the game, including Hunter Lively's key to the game. He's on the sideline. Hunter's actually having to endure all the rain on the sideline in today's game. We'll get all those much more on the Henderson State Sports Network. Hey, everybody. Rachel Ray here. Nothing puts a bigger smile on my face than cooking up a big meal for family and friends. But there's not enough room at my table for the 17 million kids in America who are struggling with hunger. These children, that's one out of every five, often have to skip meals because there's just nothing to eat in the kitchen. Yet there's more than enough healthy, nutritious food produced right here in America to feed every last hungry child. If only there was a way to get it to them. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks collects surplus food to give hope to hungry kids and their families all across our country. But they can't do it without your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America at your local food bank and at feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we are Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lopez. Just like all moms, I'm always concerned about my children's well-being. But sometimes they get sick, sometimes they get hurt. That's why I'm so grateful we have children's hospitals. Because when any child needs a miracle, they'll do everything in their power to make one happen. With our support. Please join me in giving sick and injured children every chance to get better. Support Arkansas Children's Hospital. Put your money where the miracles are. Little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my stout. No hat like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip me over and pour me <laughs> This is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Now for today's final segment on the Domino's pregame show with keys to the game. Here's your ready broadcast team, Phil Exit, RJ Hawk, and Hunter Lively. We are seven and a half minutes away from the opening kickoff of the second round of the NCAA playoffs. I'm RJ Hawk alongside Chris Kane. Let's go down to Hunter Lively, who's on the sideline for today's key to the game. Hunter. Well, guys, it is extremely light conditions down here. There are several places on the field that are uh, just standing puddles of water. It's only going to get worse as the game goes along, so we're going to definitely uh, look out for the safety of the players today. Uh, but for my key to the game, I'm going to say it's special teams. We're gonna, hopefully we won't see too many mishandled snaps or anything like that on punts and kickoff and, and uh, kicks, but uh, you never know in a game like this, fellas. Thank you, Hunter. As uh, Emporia State comes onto the field from the south end zone. Chris, your key to the game today? Uh, gain more yards than Emporia State. Their only two losses on the season come when they didn't gain as many yards or more than their opponents. So if you were able to gain, outgain them today, which is a tough task, but if you can outgain them today, that's the key to the game. And mine is put pressure on Brent Wilson. Make him uncomfortable in the pocket and not allow, allow for him to get a rhythm in the ball game. If he gets a rhythm, he's going to be very dangerous. The Reddies have to play defense like they have the last few weeks of the season. The Reddies are making the way onto the field as they are in their white pants with white uh, with red stripes, the red tops, and red helmets. As for Emporia State, they come out with their all gold uniforms with black socks, black trim, gold helmets, and gold numerals as the Reddies make their way onto the field. Today's captains for the Reddies, uh, you're going to have Dallas Hardison and Joseph Snap making their way out to center field, and uh, Emporia State has yet to send their uh, captains to the field. And as soon as uh, Hunter Lively gets out there, we will have today's Larry Pinkton Insurance Coin Toss. And um, we will have that right after we come back from this break. It's Henderson State Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. This has been the Domino's pregame show on the West I'll get your legal Network. after the, the coin come back. To enjoy a fresh. Okay. I, I gave us enough time to where we said we could talk when we came back. Yeah, it's uh, there's plenty of time. Some state football they start, on the West. They start the Network. National Anthem, yeah. Thank you.
You aspire. Dreams drive each of us. Whether you want to be an accountant or a teacher, a nurse or an artist, ambitions can become a reality at Henderson State University. We empower. At Henderson, we empower students with the tools to excel. We offer more than 70 majors, including the state's only four-year aviation program and a variety of academic support resources. In addition, we offer classes at the new Hot Springs Downtown Education Center. You achieve. A student-centered focus makes Henderson more than a university. We're a community that prepares you for a successful career and life. To learn how Henderson can transform your aspirations into lifelong achievements, visit hsu.edu. We're just moments away from the opening kickoff. You're listening to Henderson State Football on the Ready Sports Network. The snap to Rogers, rolling to his left. Kevin, for the end zone. He's got Valentine picked! Rodgers back to throw, finds Davis on a crossing pattern, Davis near side over the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, Darius Davis will take it inside the 10, he's shoved near the pylon, and it's a touchdown! Looking for Smith right side, completed a 6, he's in the end zone, touchdown Reddings! It's game time! Now with the call for today's game, here's Phil Elson, RJ Hawk, and Hunter Lively. That was the playing of the National Anthem performed today by the uh, show band of Arkansas and everybody's white. You, you look at the drums, Chris Kane, they've got, they've got bags. Covered, yeah. yeah. They've got bags over the drums so that they'll protect all the gear as we are about two, and, two minutes and 57 seconds away from the start of this one. Captains are making their way to the field right now. Looks like it's going to be uh, Corey Chappelle, Mark Chouse, along with Donovan, Mc Donovan McLeod and... Grady Allison making their way. We said earlier that Dallas Hardison and Joseph Snap would be the captains going out to midfield, but these will be the 4-4. Uh, Henderson State for Emporia State coming out to the field. You've got Brandon Gentz uh, along with Kavosky Urban. Uh, let's see here. That's Jason Petuit and I believe that's Brent Wilson before coming out for Emporia State. This is your Larry Pennington Insurance coin toss. Larry Pennington Insurance is a proud supporter of Henderson State Athletics and our Hunter Lively is making his way out there and we'll get today's official coin toss. Before you the visiting team, you're going to call the toss. That's going to be heads, that's tails. That's heads, that's tails. What is your call? Heads. Heads? Hey, he called heads. Hey, it is tails. Or receive. Do you want to receive this or put your knee on the field? No, we'll Okay, if you'll put your backside goal line, we'll put your back. Tennessee State will receive the toss, guys. Receive. They will, and uh, Emporia State will defend the south end zone here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. So. Uh, the Reddies, kind of uh, a little different strategy than what we've seen in, in games past. They win the toss and they elect to receive rather than defer uh, in this ball game. So the Reddies will have the ball first as we start the second round of the NCAA playoffs. Well, they want to get off to a fast start. Like last week, getting that, getting that opening drive score with Cole, got them moving, got this offense going, and that's what they're going to try to do right here. The rain is uh, let up a little bit here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. It's not as hard uh, of a downpour as what we saw uh, just moments ago, but uh, it's still raining pretty good as the Reddies go and line up in the north end zone as they'll be moving from left to right of your radio dial. Today's officials are out of the Lone Star Conference. You've got Dan Rankin, the head referee, Eric Chapman, your umpire. Headlinesman is Eric Kamush. Uh, Keith Loran is your line judge. Field judge is Jesse Mendoza. Side judge Charles Colston. 
back judge has got Josh Dooby. Alternate judge is Trent Crawford, and your game clock's being run by David Ward today, and the play clock by Ron Standridge. Back to receive the kick is going to be Corey Chappelle. Chappelle. Chappelle and Jacoby Lewis. Chappelle this year, 12 returns for 328 yards. That's a 27.3 average and one touchdown. And Lewis, 13 receptions with uh, 13 returns for a 28.9 yard average. So Ross lined up as they tee the ball up at the 35 yard line. The ball will be kicked from right to left of your radio dial as they let the final seconds tip, tick off the clock. And we're ready to play football here at Carpenter Haygood. Chris Kane along with RJ Hawk. Hunter Lively down the sideline. Putting a foot in it, into it for Emporia State is going to be Justin Marche. Hope Hunter brought his high waters. Yeah. It's starting to flood on the sideline. The field looks good, though. It's a low kick that bounds at the 25-yard line. Picked up by the Reddies and taken out to the 30. And uh, couldn't quite tell who got their hands on the football for the Reddies. It was an up man that got the football. And I believe for the Reddies picking the ball up, it was Ryan McDonald. And so that's where the Reddies will have the ball. First and 10 moving from left to right of your radio dial. Just underway here in the opening round of the second round. NCAA playoffs. I don't know if he didn't get a good foot on it, but it looked like in the warm-ups, RJ, they were getting a pretty good hand on the kickoffs. Maybe just not wanting to kick it to a couple guys that know how to return the football on a kickoff. Dallas Hardison leads the offense out for the Reddies as they're going to line up two wide receivers to the far side as Joseph Snap is the lone receiver to the near side. They've got two backs in the backfield as Hardison's in the shotgun. He's going to bring in motion. Uh, that'll be Jacoby Lewis. It, it's a flip to him. He comes to a, for a three-yard gain out to the 35 of the Bulls on the turf, and Emporia says they've got the ball, and they do. First play of the game, Jacoby Lewis, he lost the handle on it as James Judas was able to knock it loose and recover, and so Emporia State causes the first turnover of the ball game as they'll have it first and 10 at the ready on 35 yards. This is what we talked about in the opening segment, RJ. Got to secure the football. That is priority number one today for anyone who touches it. Not able to do that on the opening play for the Reddies. We'll have to wait and see how the defense holds up now. So now Brent Wilson brings his offense out for Emporia State as they'll have it first and 10 at the 35-yard line. 14.48 to go here in the first quarter as Wilson is going to work from the shotgun. He'll send three wide to the near side, two to the far side. Coming in motion for Emporia State's going to be Morris Williams. They hand it off to him. He'll get it all the way out back to the original line of scrimmage. May have picked up a yard on the play. And that'll bring up second down as Emporia State first play of the ball game. They come out running the football. Well, it was a short pass, and what they were trying to do is just try to get into a rhythm, not force anything deep in these conditions. They're just trying to get the ball out quickly. Three receivers bunch to the near side as Wilson takes a shotgun snap. Gets it out to Williams. Williams takes a short pass and gets it out to about the 31-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of two yards on the play, and that'll force a third down and six for Emporia State. And like we talked about, this is the same type of offense Henderson State ran two years ago under Kevin Rogers. Now, they, this team is the top 20 in the nation in third down conversion, so we'll have to wait and see how Henderson holds up. Wilson in a shotgun. Takes a shotgun snap. We're going to throw under pressure, and rolling to his right side and running out of bounds is Wilson, and he'll walk out of bounds at the 35-yard line. He was under pressure by I believe that was Jordan Dominguez for Henderson State, and he knocks him out of bounds. It's a loss of four yards on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down for Emporia State as they are outside of field goal range, so it looks like they're going to send the offense back out there. They are. They're going to send five wide receivers to the formation, three wide to the near side, two to that far side, as Wilson stands at the 40-yard line in the shotgun. Reddies have four down linemen in their formation. Now they're going to back one off as McLeod, or excuse me, that's Josh Davis backs off to the 30-yard line. Wilson takes a shotgun snap, looking to throw. Three-step drop. Looks to his right now, rolls to his right, just throws the ball away, and the Reddy's fourth force a turnover on down. That's a great job by this Reddy defense to start the ball game. It was Dominguez again getting pressure on to uh, Wilson there. He's, that's back-to-back -back plays. He's broken through that big offensive line, RJ, and been able to put a little bit of pressure on him. That's a big first start by the Reddy's. Almost just like that fumble never happened, and hopefully they're telling the guys on the sidelines, put it behind you, let's yeah. move on. No yards gained whatsoever for Emporia State on that drive, and so now Henderson State's going to get the football, and now we've got, mm -hmm. looks like we've got an official timeout, so while we do that, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Henderson State Sports Network.
Back to action, 13-23 left here in the first quarter as Dallas Harris is in the shotgun. First and 10 ball at the 35-yard line. Takes the shotgun snap, looking to throw. Hardison going with a deep pass at the right side and finds Corey Chappelle. It's in the air and deflected out of bounds. The ball was underthrown and it actually went off the helmet of Trey Dickerson and went out of bounds. And well, I tell you, for Henderson State to get away from the run game and <laughs> come out throw it like that, you almost don't like seeing that in this race. No, and it was just a little underthrown. Separation was there for the receiver. It was just, I think, this rain, RJ, it's tough to get a grip on it and really put everything you have into it. We'll see what they go to on second down here. That is, are going to send receivers two wide to each side. As Hardis is in the shotgun, has Jaquan Cole behind him. Takes a shotgun snap, looks to throw, gets it out to snap on the left side. Snap is going to pick up about four yards on the play as he gets it out to the 40-yard line. They're going to give him five yards, and it's going to bring up third down now and five for the Reddies. It was a great block by Javante Mack, only 5'8", 175 pounds. He took down two guys there at the line of scrimmage to break at least five yards open for him. So for the Reddies, it's third and five as Hardison sends three wide to the near side. He'll go five yards deep behind center. Going in motion is Javante Mack from right to left. He'll take the shotgun snap, looks to throw again. He tries to get over to Mack and it's deflected away by Emporia State's Cole Shanky, and that's going to bring up fourth down for the Reddies, and yet the Reddies have yet to run the football. Yeah, it was just good defense there by Shanky, and, you know, the Reddies, we expected them to come out and run the ball with Cole. Maybe Emporia State did as well. Scott Maxfield trying to mix things up there on that second drive and see if they can get anything out of it. So it's fourth and five for the Reddies as Evan Lassiter comes on to kick for the Reddies. And it looks like the punt team, or the punt block, Morris Williams is back deep for... Emporia State. Laster puts a foot into it. It's a good one. It's going to hit at the 30-yard line and take a ready roll all inside the 20-yard line, inside the 15, down inside the 10, and goes out of bounds at the 7-yard line. Great punt by Evan Lassiter as that was a 27-yard roll. Yeah, 27-yard roll, but it was a 52-yard punt for Evan Lassiter. And for Lassiter, his longest of the season was a 60-yarder. So that's a great punt this rain. And it really flips the field for Emporia State. Yeah, backed him up all the way inside their own 10. It bounced at the 30 and just took a, a ready roll all the way down to the 7. So it'll be first and 10 from the seven yard line as Brent Wilson brings the offense out of the field. He'll be in the shotgun with the back behind him. That's Antonio Brown. Wilson takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Brown. Brown goes right side, has a running lane. He's out to the 20 yard line and it's finally taken down out to the 22 yard line where it's gonna be a first down for, the, for Emporia State and it's a pickup of 13 yards on the play. Brown, 586 yards on the season coming into today's game. Not a heavily used back, but we'll see if they go to him here on this second drive after the first drive, throwing it three straight times. So, balls at the 22-yard line. First and 10, they're going to hand it off to Brown again. Straight up the middle, he has nowhere to go as he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And so that'll bring up second and 10 for Emporia State. 12.02 left here in the first quarter of play. We've got a scoreless ball game between Henderson State and Emporia State. Reddy's trying to make some noise on the near sideline as Brent Wilson is in the shotgun, brings up Brown to his left side. He'll hand it off to Brown. He goes right. Brown stretches it out all the way to the sideline and it's going to pick up five yards on the play and that'll bring up third down for Emporia State. Third and very manageable now for Emporia. They run it three straight times here, RJ, after passing it three straight on their opening drive. We'll see what they try to do, maybe mix in some play action here on third down. I said he picked up five yards. He must have, they were saying he stepped out of bounds oh. at uh, the 27-yard line. So that's only a three-yard pickup. It's now third down and five for Emporia State. He slid five yards. Wilson in the shotgun. Takes the shotgun snap, takes the handoff, looks to throw, goes right side, and through the second by the Reddies! Taking it up the left side, and out of battle! On the interception for the Reddies, it's Ty and Avery, who got the game winning interception last week for the Reddies. Oh, what an interception, RJ! He was right there waiting on it. He knew the play action was coming. It was a play action read. Perfectly executed defense right there. That time they went into coverage and Ty and Avery was right there to pick it off. And for the Reddies, that's their 28th interception on the air. And Ty and Avery made the game-winning interception last week against Sioux Falls. And he stays on course by getting the first turnover for Emporia State today. And now the Reddies have it first and 10 balls at the 23-yard line in Emporia territory. 
Avery's third interception of the season. Dallas Hardison in the shotgun. Going to hand it off. It's off to Jaquan Cole at the left side. He'll be bottled up in the backfield as he loses his helmet. And he'll go down. He'll be thrown to the turf. It's going to be a one-yard loss. And that'll bring up second down and 11. Actually, second down and 12 is where they're officially marking it for the Reddies. Cole's going to come off the field after losing his helmet there. His helmet actually went about seven yards backwards. But if you ask him, would you rather keep your helmet or the ball, I'm pretty sure he'd say the ball, and he held on to it there. That last interception for Brent Wilson, that's his 13th interception of the season. Dallas Hardison in the shotgun, has two wide outs to the right side. Coming in motion, though, is going to be James Jackson. They're going to hand the ball off. It's over the right side and carrying the football for the Reddies. That time, I believe that was Rodney Bryson who checked in the ball game. and He took it off the right edge and got back to the original line of scrimmage where it will be third down now and 11 for the Reddies. Yeah, he was looking to go north and south. Didn't have many openings. Ended up having to go uh, to the sideline to look for something. Nothing there working in that second down play. So the Reddies are going to send three wide to the far side, two to the near side. Joseph snaps the deep man on the near side as Harris is in the shotgun. Hardison takes the snap, three-step drop, looks to throw, now rolls to his right. Hardison still looking, throws to the end zone, and it goes out of bounds. Ball was out of bounds well before it got to Joseph Snap, who is his intended target. And so that'll bring up fourth down and 11 for the Reddies. And now it's decision time. Do you bring in Houston Ray to kick the field goal in this rain, or do you leave the offense on the field? It looks like the Reddies are going to leave the offense on the field. You know, it's interesting, RJ, because he... Houston Ray's a great kicker. He's one of nine NCAA Division II kickers in the Fred Mitchell Award watch list. You know, he's made 15 this season already so far, only a few shy of the record, but it looks like they're going to keep him on the sidelines, even though this is well within his range. Joseph Snaps puts out wide to the far side. He's the lone receiver out there as they've got two wide to the near side. In motion is Javante Mack from right to left. Hardison looks to throw. Hardison looking for the end zone, and he overthrows Joseph Snap. Ball goes out of the back of the end zone. He just lost the handle on the football. You can just tell that, Chris. Yeah, you know, that, that ball out there right now is as slippery as you'll ever find one, and that's the reason. Hardison's having trouble getting any kind of grip on it in any of these deep passes. The short passes, he's been pretty pretty consistent so far, but anything over 20 yards right now, not really getting a handle on it. So it's a turnover on downs for the Reddies as now Emporia State comes back out, and really, we're seeing a lot more passing in this ball game, Chris, than what we really thought we would. Yeah, you know, these, these kind of games are typically low scoring because it's a lot of running. Well, they're throwing a lot, and that's really holding the score down right now. So Emporia is going to send out three wide to the near side as Wilson's in the shotgun five yards deep. He's going to bring a man in motion, and he hands it off to that man. I didn't have him on my roster. That was actually going to say that's Landon Nolts, who came in motion, took the handoff, and picked up three yards on the play. And so Nolts actually lined up as a receiver that time, and now he'll be as running back to the right of Wilson. So it's second down and seven for Emporia, two wide either side. Wilson's going to hand it off to Nolts again. He goes to the right side and is stuck right there at the line of scrimmage, then falls forward for a couple of yards on the play. And so that'll bring up third down now and about four yards for Emporia. Nolts only 5'9", 191 pounds. He's rushed for 513 yards coming into this game, three touchdowns on the season. So it's third down and four for Emporia. 9.31 and counting left here in the first quarter of play. Wilson's in the shotgun. Wilson sends Nolt in motion to the right. Now fakes a throw, goes up the middle, trying to pick up the first down, but the Reddies were right there, and they get him for about a one-yard gain. Leading the tackle for the Reddies was Trevon Trev Del Rio, and he stopped Wilson in his tracks, and it's third down and three now for Emporia. Yeah, interesting play call there, going with the, uh, the draw on third down, maybe trying to catch the Reddies off guard, but they were ready for it. So it's fourth down for Emporia, as they're going to bring on the punting unit. On the punt is Justin Marche. Back deep is Snap and Chow. Still stand at the 35-yard line. Marche going to take the snap, put a foot into it, and it's going to go to the hands of Joseph Snap. Snap has it. He's out to the 40-yard line. Has some running room out to the 45-50. Still on his feet in the Emporia territory. All the way down to the 37-yard line, but we've got building flags down. Yeah, I'll have to wait and see what this call was. I didn't see any... Any illegal blocks, at least on the initial catch, but down the field when things can get a little convoluted, that might have what it might have been the block to spring him free, at least. We'll have to wait and see what the call is on the field. Well, let's get the official call from our head referee today, Dan Rankin. 
Yeah, his microphone's yeah. not working too well today. Illegal block in the back, though. That's going to be the call. And it looks like they are marking it right around the 45 of Emporia, so that's going to push them back 10 yards. It did happen right there at the very end of the run, but they're still going to have pretty good field position here, RJ, at their own 45. 8.35 left here in the first quarter of play. We've got a scoreless ball game between Emporia and Henderson State. So the Reds will bring out their offense as Dallas Hardison has Jaquan Cole lined up behind him. Two wide to each side of the offense. Hardison eyes the defense. Ball's at the 45-yard line in Henderson territory. In motion from left to right is Javante Mack. They hand it off to Cole. Cole tries to stretch it wide to the left side, and he'll get it for about a two-yard gain as he takes it out to the 47-yard line. And so that'll bring up second down and eight for Henderson State. Jordan Robinson with the tackle on that play out of Topeka, Kansas. And he kind of just stayed right there, shifting along the line, didn't try to penetrate. He knew the play was going to be an outside run, and he was able to stay with it and stop him for a two-yard gain. So second down and eight for the Reddies as Hardison's in the shotgun, has two wide to the near side, one to the top side. In motion for the Reddies. It's going to be Josh Miller, the tight end. He goes from the left side to the right side of the formation. Here's Jaquan now. Cole goes up the right side. Powers forward for maybe a one-yard gain. I don't know if he even got that. As that's going to bring up third down. And no, they're just going to say he got back to the original line of scrimmage. So you've got third down and eight for the Reddies now. And boy, the running game is just not effective right now for the Reddies. Yeah, well, you know, Emporia State kind of selling out on the run of those last two plays. They tried it to the left side. Didn't get much. Tried to the right side. Didn't get anything. I'll have to wait and see what they try to do here on third down as you know Emporia State's going to be playing the pass on this one. Two wide to the far side as Joseph Snap lines up tight to the formation on the near side. Hardison's in the shotgun as he's got Jaquan Cole to the back side. Here's Hardison looking to throw downfield. There's a penalty flag down as the intended receiver was Ben Johnson. And that's going to be a pass interference on Emporia. Ben Johnson, was he was carrying a trailer down the field that time. It was a horse collar hold is what it was down the sideline. Easy call for the referee to pick up there. Yeah, the official's microphone's not working today. We'll have to, I, you know, the rain does a lot of weird <laughs> things to people. And so and technology. And technology. Yes. So either way, that's going to be an automatic first down for the Reddies. And that that's the first first down for the Reddies of the ball game. How about that? <laughs> now into Emporia territory. They're going to start on the Emporia 43-yard line. So first and ten for the Reddies as two receivers go to the left side. Hardison's in a shotgun with Jaquan Cole behind him. Emporia looks to blitz off that left side. Here's Hardison. Hands it off to Jaquan. He dives forward and picks up maybe a yard on the player. Looks like that far official's marked him back at the original line of scrimmage. And so that's going to bring up second down and ten. Yeah, Emporia's selling out on the run in these last two series. And, uh, you know, they even sent the blitz on third down. They're trying to get as much pressure, keep it at least eight or nine men in the box at all times. You don't, you see one high safety right now is all they're playing. They're not, they're not really concerned with the pass at this point. 6.45 and counting left here in the first quarter of play. Second and 10 for the Reddies. As Miller goes in motion from right to left, three receivers in the formation on the top side. We've got a penalty flag on that far side, and this is a Jeremy Hughes shelter insurance penalty flag, and it's going to be a false start on the Reddies. That'll back them up five yards. Yeah, false start, not something uh, you want to see there from your Henderson State offense. You finally got a good call into the territory of Emporia State. Now you're backed up from, uh, looks like you're going to be right around the Emporia State 47 and a half yard line with extended, at least, you know, you're looking at, you're looking at what you have to do here. Maybe a, a draw, RJ, mix it up a little bit. Just the straight run hasn't been working for him. Even a pass out in the flats right now would be uh, something that might mix it up and get your running back in open space. Two receivers are stacked on the far side as Hardison's in the shotgun with Jaquan to his left. Hardison rolls to his left, and we've got whistles again. And looks like... I don't see any penalty flags. I don't. Looks like a delay of game oh, on the Reddies. No. And so that's going to back him up another five yards. I never saw a penalty flag, but it came from the back judge. And, That's uh, his job. Yeah, he, he threw it down, and so we had a delay of game. And now the Reddies are facing second down and 20. They've got to get all the way up to the 38-yard line to get a first down in Emporia Territory. As the ball right now is spotted at the 47-yard line. That's the line of scrimmage yes. to get back to the 38. Here's Hardison. Hardison oh, loses no. the handle on it. 
falls back down on it though, and that's going to be a major loss. He went to go throw a screen pass, and he lost a handle on it, and now the ball's going to be spotted at the 31-yard line back in Henderson territory. This is going from bad to worse, all in a matter of about three plays. It's now going to be third down and a mile. And, and a half, 40, maybe. Is it 45? I'll have to wait till they... They won't even put it on the board. It's so yeah. far. Yeah, they... they, they it's can't, not 20. No, it's not 20. It's, let's see. The ball's at the 31-yard line, so... Here's going to hand out the call. Yeah, Jaquan takes it all the way out to the 43-yard line to where it'll bring up fourth down. And as I said, they had to get the ball all the way to the 38. And that is a... It would have been third down and 38 for the Reddies on that last drive. So now the punting unit's on for the Reddies. Now you just hope you can pin them deep again and reset and kind of talk to your offense about what went wrong on that last series, namely penalties and, 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 and penalties against yourself too. I mean, a false start and a delay of game back to back. Laster has the ball, looks to kick, and he puts a nice boot into it. Oh, yeah. Williams goes back and he gets it at the 20 yard line and takes a ball to the ground. Ball to the ground. The Reddies say they've got it. The Reddies say they've got the 10 yard line, and the Reddies have the football, it looks like, as three players popped up. The officials haven't officially made a call yet. Ready now, yeah, it's ready football. What a great job. Williams went, he was backpedaling for the punt, and I didn't quite see who laid the hit for the Reddies, as I want to say it was McLeod who laid the hit, but either way, the Reddies now are going to have great field position as the ball is going to be spun at the 10-yard line, and there's going to be another penalty against Emporia State, and so they're going to put the ball half the distance to the goal. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Emporia, and the ball is now going to be spun at the 6-yard line where the Reddies will have first and goal. Who thought? Who would have thought punting is a way of offense in this game? They went from third and 38 to now first and goal. As Hardis is in the shotgun with two wide on the left side, has Cole to his backside. Hardison now eyeing the defense, looks up and points out the wheel linebacker on the right side of the defense. Hardison takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw, looking to the left corner for Mack, and it's in and out of the hands, no good, and they're going to say that Mack bounced out of Mack's hands, and the boys say they intercepted the football, but it hit the turf. Yeah, Mack only 5'8", 175, a fade in the end zone. And it looks like uh, the safety did come over there and help out at the very end. I hope that they get back to the running game here. You're in great field position. This is a chance to pound it in and run some of that clock. Now they're saying it's an interception for Emporia. Oh, boy. The, uh, the back judge came and, and came in conference with the line judge, and they're saying that that was an interception in favor of Emporia. Well, you know Scott Maxfield's going to want to talk to an boy. official about that one. I tell you, that was a really late call. I think the rain may be affecting these officials a little bit. The rain is affecting a lot yeah. today, RJ. It can affect just about anything out there. Boy, we have had a, a crazy game so far. 421 left in the first quarter. 0-0 ball game. Brent Wilson for Emporia has got the ball at the 20-yard line after the touchback. Going to hand the ball straight up the middle as he gives it off to Brown. Brown loses the football to Cliff, and it's picked up by Emporia, it looked like. And Brown had the ball knocked out, and a ready player was right there to jump on it, but picking it up for Emporia was Kowalski Irvin. We talked about ball security before the game, and we're seeing how important that's been. Not just security, but having a guy around to secure it in case you lose it, now becoming an intricate part of the game. So now Brent Wilson in the shotgun. Has Brown to his right side. Wilson going to take the shotgun snap. Fakes the run. Now looks to throw. He's going to roll to his right. Under pressure. Flips it off to his tight end. And he's only going to pick up a yard on the play. And I said it was his tight end. It was actually it was actually yeah. Trenton Ball, the tight end. It's the redshirt freshman tight end out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, who was able to get the reception and pick up one yard on the play. He's 6'6", 229, a tall target. Only got a yard on it, though. Now second down and nine. They're going to hand the ball off to Brown. Brown goes up the right side. Has some running room. He's got the first down into ready territory and finally run out of bounds that time after picking up a big yardage on the play for the Reddies. That's a 22-yard gain for Emporia State. And so they'll have first and 10 in ready territory. The ball's being spotted at the 30. No, they're going to say they're going to back him up now. They're going to go all the way back. 
to the 43-yard line. Yeah, they're saying he stepped out of bounds just before he was hit there on the sideline. So it's first and 10 for Emporia as Wilson takes a shoot snap. Hands it off straight up the middle. That time it's Null. Null spin move and is finally taken down to 35 after picking up eight yards on the play. And so that brings up second down and two for Emporia. If you're Henderson State right now, you want to swarm to the ball carrier and try to force a fumble. The way the ball's been popping out early in this game, it could happen at any time. Wilson takes a shotgun snap, gives it off to Nolte again. Nolte runs right side, has the first down, and falls down at the 26-yard line. And now the running game for Emporia is starting to pick up. Now they found it. They found something that works for them. They're going off tackle on every running play, running to the outside, avoiding the middle of the field, and finding just a little bit of space, spinning off the first tackler and picking up big gains. First and ten for Emporia. Ball's at the 26-yard line. Shotgun snap. They hand it off to Brown. Brown straight up the middle, and he's going to pick up a yard, maybe two on the play. And that'll bring up second down for Emporia. Running up the middle really hasn't been effective for either team so far in this game, so they're both working to get on the outskirts of the line, and by doing that and finding a little space, you're hoping you can make the first man miss with the slippery conditions and find that extra yardage. They're running up the middle. Not looking good. Brent Wilson, the shotgun on second down and eight. 2.17 left here in the first quarter. Wilson going to hand it to Brown. Brown goes right side, stretches the play out, and he'll be pulled down for a one-yard gain. That time on the tackle for the Reddies was Lawson Schultz. And so that brings up third down and seven for Emporia. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they try to do here. Their kickers in, in practice were making field goals well beyond this, but with the conditions the way they are, maybe try to play a four-down-like series here and try to pick up a little bit and then go for it on the next play. We'll see. Third down and seven and as Brent Wilson in the shotgun. Has a back behind him. The back is Landon Nolt. They're going to set a receiver split wide to either side. And they're going to have the tight end ball on the right side of the formation. Wilson takes the shotgun snap. Looks to throw. Wilson rolls to the right side. Wilson throws and it's incomplete as he throws it out of bounds. And so that's a fourth down for Emporia. And now they've got decision time on whether they want to kick the field goal. Their kicker, Austin Gordon, has kicked a 41-yard field goal this year, but I don't think it was in a driving range. No. But they were up. Now they are sending the uh, the field goal team on. Originally it looked like they were going to go for it. No, they are going for it. Well, they just changed out the entire well, offense. The holder is going to oh, be Brett okay. Wilson. <laughs> I'm just making sure. It's going to be a 36-yard field goal for Austin Morton. And at 24 left in the first quarter. Snap down, hold down, kick is up, and it is no good as it bounces off the left side of the upright. And the Reds once again avoid disaster after a fumble, and they get the ball back. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Yeah, you know, in, in warm-ups, he liked it on the right hash, which is where they were, and he was making them well beyond that 30-yard line mark, which is where he kicked it from. Let's head down to Hunter Lively on the sideline. He just saw that. He was on the same side of the field as that kick, Hunter. Yeah, guys. The, uh, the holder actually had a really difficult time corralling that ball as the, the deep snapper snapped, and that served as a, a main purpose for why that was a short kick. I don't think it was a clean – the kicker didn't get a clean kickoff. But, uh, RJ, I want to thank you for giving me this umbrella pregame, even though it is Emporia State colors. I've caught a, a little bit of flat from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't think about that. Hunter's, Hunter's carrying an umbrella around that has Emporia State colors on it. And wearing ready gear. He's, he's a man of yes. the people. Sox. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes. Dallas Hardison's in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Quan Cole. Cole drives straight up the middle, has some running room, and picks up about five yards on the play. Great job by Jaquan as he took it up the right side. And so that's the best run for Jaquan of the day. Yeah, he found just a little bit of an opening there. And the great thing about Cole is he's 5'8", 185. So even if it's a small space, he can fit through it. He was just looking for a window, and he found a little one there to start this drive. Second down and five for Henderson State. Three wide come to the near side as Jaquan Cole's the lone set back behind Dallas Hardison. Coming in motion is Javante Mack from right to left as Hardison takes a shotgun stab. Hands it off to Cole. Cole has no running room. He gets bottled up in the backfield. He falls down back at the 25-yard line. That's going to be a loss of three yards on the play. And so that's going to bring up third down and long for the Reddies, and they just cannot run the football. Well, okay. Emporia State is saying beat us through the air, and they're not going to do anything special in the past defensive game right now. They're going all out on the run. They're going to sell out on it until Dallas Hardison and this receiving core can make them pay through the air. They're going to keep making plays like that. Fifteen seconds left here in the first quarter of play as 
We're going to have to, well, they could actually just let the quarter come to an end, but Hardison looks like he's going to run a play. Hardison in the shotgun, brings Mack in motion from left to right, takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw under pressure. Hardison still looking, still looking, and then throws it out of bounds, and that's going to force fourth down and the end of the first quarter of play. 0-0 is our score between Henderson State and Emporia State as it's the second round of the NCAA playoffs in the Henderson State Sports Network. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward to treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. Arkadelphia Super Smiles is located at the Professional Park Drive Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. for another season of hard-hitting game day parties? Hunger is ready, ready to strike without mercy. Whether you join the party at a tailgate or in your own living room, Subway Catering's lineup includes giant subs, sandwich platters, cookie platters, chips and drinks, everything you need to crush hunger and score a touchdown for football fans everywhere. So get in there. Subway, eat fresh. Catering orders must be placed 24 hours in advance. See participating store for details. This is Mark Charles. You're listening to Henderson Football on the Ready Sports Network. Just underway here in the second quarter of play as the Reddies are looking to punt on fourth down and the ball's at the 24-yard line in Ready territory. Laster gets the snap and it's blocked. The ball is blocked and it bounces out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And Lasseter, he had no, he had two guys in his face when he kicked it, and now Emporia State's going to have great field position as they'll have it first and ten at the ready 26-yard line. A total of a three-yard punt there, just rolling out of bounds at the 35-yard uh, line, and now sets up Emporia State in great field position. But we've seen the Emporia have great field position twice in this ball game, and the ready defense stepped up. I haven't really seen Brent Wilson throw the football all that much, mainly because of the way that it's been raining, but how about the, the running game for Emporia so far in the ball game? They've run the ball for 78 yards in the game. So Brent Wilson moves from left to right of your radio dial. He's in the shotgun, has Brown to his left side. Hands the ball off to Brown, straight up the middle, and he's still on his feet as he's going to pick up about four yards on the play. And so that'll bring up second down and six for Emporia. Brown with now seven rushes for 50 yards in this game. With a long of 23, he's averaging over seven yards a carry so far. Second down and six as Emporia is going to bring a tight formation. One wide receiver to each side as the ball's on the turf and Wilson's got to pick it up and run with it. He's got to go to the right side and he just falls down. And that'll be a loss of two yards on the play. And that'll bring up third down for Emporia. To bring up third down and nine, and boy, yeah, I tell you, it's just when that ball gets wet, Chris Kane, it, uh, it's tough to hold on to. We've seen it from both sides today. The best defense we've seen so far today has been Mother Nature, RJ, because both these teams are struggling against her, and it is going to be a tough, tough outing to try to score any points today. Third down and nine for Emporia. They're going to hand the ball off. It goes to Brown up the left side. He goes straight up the middle now as he reverses field, picks up a yard, and they'll bring up a fourth down situation for Emporia, and now... You want to know, are they going to try to kick another field goal? As the ball's at the 24-yard line this time, so that would be a that would be about a 36-yard field goal. Yeah, they're going to kick the field goal here, and they're backing up. He's going to be kicking it for about the 31, so a 41-yarder. Well, they are marking it at the 40. Yeah, you're exactly right. So a 41-yarder as the ball's in the middle of the field. Snaps back, holds down, the kick is up. It's an end over end, and it's good. First points of the ball game come from Austin Morton for Emporia as they take a 3 0 lead. 13 12 left here in the first half of play. You're listening to Henderson State Sports on the Henderson State Sports Network. Don't be sidelined due to your injury. The orthopedic team at Tex Arcana Surgery Center with Dr. Richard Hillborn, Trey Mitchell, Doug Thompson, and Tom Young are here to help get you back in the game. Tex Arcana Surgery Center, taking special care of our community for over 18 years. Coach Johnny Ray Brummett was released from his contract today. Let's listen in on this press conference. I'm not a genius. A genius is a guy like Norman Einstein. I'm obviously disappointed it didn't work out, but it will allow me to spend more time with my family. Coach, 
Baby, for who is this whore? Oh, excuse me, I gotta take this. <laughs> Mama's calling. Why don't you plan on spending that family time in Hot Springs, Coach? Hot Springs has all the fun. Follow Hot Springs on social media or plan your trip at visithotsprings.org. It's been a great ride. If you're struggling with your mortgage, there's a free government program that offers expert one-on-one -on -one advice about your mortgage options. Call 1-888-9950 or visit makinghomeaffordable.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury Card and the Ad Council. Hey, this is Dallas Artisan. Welcome back to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. 13-12 left here in the first half as the kickoff is a low-line drive, and it's going to be picked up by Corey Chappelle at the 15-yard line. Chappelle takes it right side, still on his feet, finally drove, driven out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And so that's where the Rays will have first and ten moving from right to left from the radio down. That was your smart forward scoring drive for Emporia State. I believe uh, only three yards on the drive there, but they did finish with a 41-yard field goal. Next time you need to purchase a vehicle, make the smart drive to Smart Buick Ford in Malvern. So the Reds try to get something going on this next drive as they'll send the offense out. They've had plenty of opportunities. The Reds actually should be up in this ballgame six to nothing. But turnovers have forced their way through this ballgame so far. Hardison in the shotgun, hands the ball off to Jaquan Cole. Cole goes straight up the middle, still on his feet, and he's going to pick up about five yards on the play. Nice run as he takes it out to the 30-yard line. And they're going to say he's going to all the way be all the way out to the 31-yard line. So that's actually a six-yard pickup. And they'll bring up second down and four for Henderson State. One of the longest runs of the day for Cole, too. Hasn't found much space here in the early going, but that time able to just move his way through the middle of the pile and pick up some extra yardage. So it brings up second down and four as Hardison's in the shotgun as Jaquan behind him. Receiver set to each side. Hardison walks up to the line of scrimmage, checks the defense. Now Takes the shotgun snap, hands it to Jaquan up the right side. He'll stretch it out. Jaquan finally gets met at the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up a yard on the play. And so that'll bring up third down now for the Reddies. They're going to say he didn't get anywhere. On the tackle is Cole Shanky for Emporia. A quick Southwest Sporting Goods scoreboard update right now. Northwestern Missouri leads a humble 21 to nothing. The winner of this game plays the winner of that game between Humboldt and Northwestern Missouri. And looks like Northwestern Missouri is handling their, their end of the deal nicely at home. Here's Hardison, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Now throws it, finds Miller, but it's in and out of his hands. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Reddy. That was a great play fake by Hardison. Everybody moved to the left side, and he rolled out to the right side. He even had a little daylight in front of him. He's not a big runner, but he did have some move, move, room to work. Trust his receiver on that one, just right through his hands. And, RJ, you gotta, you got to contribute that to the conditions today. Yeah, I mean, it went in and out of his hands. And Miller's not been one to catch many passes this yeah. year either. I mean, this is not a tight end-laden uh, team where they have designed plays for the tight end. And uh, it just went in, you know, through his hands, and now it's fourth down. And Laster's back to punt. Hopefully he can get one off this time. Now it goes through Laster's hands. Laster's just going to pick it up, and he'll lose the handle on the football, and Emporia's going to walk it in for a touchdown. Evan Lasseter had to go right through his hands. It's a scoop and score for Emporia. And so Emporia now has a 9 to nothing lead. RJ, this is the kind of day where points are going to come at a premium, and you cannot emphasize that enough. If you are in field goal range at any time, kick the field goal. you got two good kickers on, on, on both sides of the field. And what did we say before the game? Securing the football. The punters were having issues in the pregame securing it. And there right there you see Lasker not able to lock it in before the punt. So it's a touchdown for Emporia. They lead 9-0 as on is Austin Morton to kick the extra point. And the kick is in the air, and it is good. And Emporia, just like that, leads 10 to nothing. 11.36 left here in the first half of play on the Henderson State Sports Network. This is the story of Daniel, who was born two months early. He weighed one pound, seven ounces. His lungs weren't ready. His heart wasn't ready. His brain wasn't ready. At the hospital, the nurses said Daniel was a fighter, and they would do all they could to help him. The doctor said even with the best care, Daniel may never walk. He may never see. He may never learn. Daniel's parents spent night after night at the hospital, watching his every breath, holding his tiny hands, 
looking for signs that he was growing stronger. At home, his parents looked around Daniel's empty nursery, at the quiet toys and the still rocker, and they hoped that one day they could sit in that rocking chair and tell this story to their very healthy son. Daniel's is just one of the more than 500,000 stories of babies born prematurely last year, but there's hope for a happy ending. The March of Dimes is funding the research and programs to stop premature birth. You can help bring more babies home healthy. Learn how at marchofdimes.com. Working together for stronger, healthier babies. Hey, this is Gary Barnes. Thanks for listening to Ready for Bell on the Hemsley Safe Sports Network. 11.36 left here in the second quarter of play. 10 to nothing. Emporia leads Henderson State as the kickoff's in the air. And it's a low line drive that goes into the hands of Chappelle. He loses the handle on it. Now picks it back up at the 10. Chappelle straight up the middle. Has running room up the right side. Gets past one man. Out to the 40-yard line. And finally knocked out of bounds. All the way out to the 47-yard line. Boy, that's a nice job by Corey Chappelle after losing the handle on it. And so Corey Chappelle after... Uh, a mishandle by Evan Lasseter now gives the ready some line as they get all the way out to midfield. Well, you can see why they don't want to kick to him. He's averaging 27 yards a return, and they tried to just kind of pooch it down the middle. It ended up bouncing over him. He grabbed it, reset his vision. That's, did you see him take that extra yeah. second to kind of reset the field of play? And, man, you talk about wheels. He had those tires burning. So now Henderson State has the football at the 48-yard line as Dallas Hardison sends... A man in motion, that's James Jackson from right to left. Now Hardison's going to roll to his left. Flips it out to Jaquan Cole. He picks it up out to the 45-yard line before finally being knocked out of bounds by Emporia State's Drew Cook. And some words exchanged there between Cook and Cole. And so that's going to be a pickup of eight yards of the play. And that'll bring up second down and two for Henderson State. That was only the second completion of the game for the Reddies. Dallas Hardison now two for nine on the game for 13 yards. So Hardison going to bring his guys to the line of scrimmage. Ball spot at the 45-yard line in, in Emporia territory. Hardison stands at the 50, has two receivers in the formation, one on each side. Hardison hands it off to Jaquan, straight up the middle, picks up the first down out to the 41-yard line. And so... That'll be a fresh set of downs for the Reddies, and really for the Reddies, that's only their second first down of the ball game. That's good, though. Mixing it up a little bit, the play action rollout now going up the middle. Spread the ball out to all different areas of the field and try to make them guess where you're going next. So it's first and 10 ball at the 41-yard line. As Hardison's in a shotgun, rolls to his right under pressure, and is just going to throw it out of bounds. And that'll bring up second and ten. That's one thing though, Hardison's done a really good job of later in the season is living for another down. He, he's, instead of trying to force the situation, he'll just throw away. And that's something he didn't do early in the year, and he's gotten a lot better with it. Yeah, Hardison has really come on strong here in the second half of the season. After starting with five touchdowns and five interceptions, he now finishes with eight touchdowns and only two picks. In fact, his last interception before this game happened uh, back in October. So the weather today playing a factor in that most recent one. Second down and 10 as Hardison sends two wide to each side as Jaquan's going to go in motion from left to right. They'll flip it to him in the flats. Jaquan's at the 40-yard line. In the territory, 30-yard line, 25-20. Still on his feet all the way down to the 17-yard line. That was just a nice little flip by to Jaquan Cole. And the Reddies are in the red zone for the first time. Well, the second time is the David Boss red zone. And it's the second time today the Reddies have offensively gotten in the red zone. It was just a great design overall. Great pass right out in front of Cole where it needed to be. And Cole did a good job of securing it. And then he turned on the burners. Ended up moving up the field. He even slid five extra yards, but they marked him back at the 13. It's a 24-yard pickup for Jaquan Cole as Hardison's in the shotgun first and 10. Looks to throw. Now he's going to take it himself straight up the middle. Hardison still running all the way down to the 12-yard line. And... It's going to be a pickup of about five yards on the play. They're going to give him five, and it'll be second and five. 9.53 and counting left here in the second quarter of play. Emporia leads Henderson State 10 to nothing. Great job by Hardison, recognizing the pressure up the middle, not trying to just sit in the pocket and, and keep the play a lot, and keep the play going. He knew he had to keep the play alive, and so he moved up for a good game. Two wide to each side. Just Jaquan Coles in the shotgun behind Dallas Hardison. Hardison 
Eyes the defense. Now takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Jaquan. Up the left side, he gets his feet taken out from underneath him. And on the tackle that time was Josh Montagudo. And so that's going to be a loss of four yards on the play. And they're up third down and nine. And we've got a whistle and timeout as the ready players down on the turf. Can't quite see who that is. Can you criticize? Oh, they are, their, their number is turned around. Let's go down to Hunter Lively on the sidelines for a Fat Boys Fine Food Sideline Report. Hunter. Yeah, guys, it looks like it was Jacoby Willis, the elusive kick returner and wide receiver. And uh, Willis already had Mark Chels go down with a, an ankle injury, and I believe it was the first or second drive. That's why he hasn't been out on the field uh, very much here in the first half. And so uh, this would be a detrimental blow to this ready offensive attack if Jacoby can't go. Hunter, what's, uh, how hard is the rain falling right now? Because it looks like yeah, it's coming down pretty good. It's definitely picked up since the beginning of the game. Uh, once again, RJ, really appreciative of this umbrella. Even though it is in the Emporia colors, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, he, he just keeps throwing <laughs> it out there. Now, you know what? I think at halftime I'm going to take that umbrella back. <laughs> it looks like they're, he is favoring the right ankle. They're going to lift him up, and uh, he's not going to put much weight on that right ankle as he makes his way off the field. Yeah, they're going to bring him off. And boy, Jacoby Lewis, you lose uh, to each receiver spot. You lost Darian Gray last week, and now hopefully Jacoby Lewis can come back because they were the second and third stringers at the H receiver spot. Now you've got just Javante Mack, and uh, they're going to have to move some guys like A.J. Smith or James Jackson over there, even Ben Johnson into that formation. And, and now we see Ben Johnson checking in the ball game. So he'll line up as the outside receiver on the near side. It's third down and nine for the Reddies as hard as it's in the shotgun. Two wide to either side as Javante Mack is the slot man on the near side. Cole goes up to the line of scrimmage and tells, talks to his offensive lineman. Nine minutes remaining in the second quarter of play. Third down and nine as Hardison takes the snap. Looks to throw. Cole going to flip it off in, in and out of the hands of... Uh, is that... Bryson, yeah, it is. So Bryson checked in, and it went in and out of his hands. And now it brings up the fourth down, and the punting unit's going to come on for Henderson State. Yeah. Well, actually, they're going to bring on Houston Ray to kick the field goal. Just a little out in front of Bryson there, not able to lock it down. He did have some, some green around him to work a little bit, uh, but it looked like he was going to be tackled behind the first down marker regardless. Ray's need points here. Houston Ray comes on for the field goal, and it's going to be a 33-yard field goal. Snaps back, holds down, the kick is up, and it is no good. He missed it wide left. Missed it wide left as Mark Chaus couldn't get the snap down. You can tell Chaus is still hurting, and that's a missed opportunity for the Rays. Let's go back down to Hunter on the sideline. Hunter. Yeah, it was not a, not a clean catch at all. It was a little bit to the right of where Chaus wanted to catch that ball as he uh, barely got it down on the turf right before Houston kicked it, guys. So that's going to give Emporia State field position at the... 23-yard line. Actually, they're at the 20-yard line. And so it'll be first and 10 for Emporia with 9.46 and counting left here in the second quarter of play. Brent Wilson in the shotgun. Has Nault to his left side. Hands it off to Nault. He's going to try to stretch it to the right. Nault takes it out to the 25-yard line and it's going to be a pickup of five yards in the play. And so that'll bring up second and five with 8.35 and counting. Nault now five carries for 28 yards, averaging about six yards per play on the day, 5.8 to be exact. So uh, not too bad for him so far coming in and mopping up for Antonio Brown, who's their speed guy. So here's Wilson in the shotgun. going to hand it off to Brown. Brown goes up the left side. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Great job that time by the Reddies as leading the charge for the Reddies was Josh Davis, along with, I believe, coming in from his secondary spot was Christian Love. And so that'll bring him third down and three now for Emporia. Wilson in the shotgun. Going to hand the ball off to Brown. We've got Wilson's and penalty flags. At that time, Brown was leaving just a touch too early. And so that'll back him up five yards. Yeah, Wilson looked like he was going with the hard count there and uh, didn't catch anyone offsides on the defense. In fact, tricked his own line, and they're going to be backed up for that one. So it's going to back Emporia back all the way up to the 22-yard 20, line. That'll bring up third down and eight now for the Hornets. 7.45 and counting left here in the second quarter of play. Emporia leads hitters the state 10 to nothing. Miscues have been the detriment of the Reddies so far as the Reddies have turned the ball over three times here in the first half. 
Brett Wilson in the shotgun has Brown to his right, takes the handoff, looks to throw. Wilson has all kinds of time, now going to run with it, and he'll be taken down back at the 23-yard line. Great job that time by the Reddies is making the tackle was Jordan Dominguez, and he's been in the backfield all day today, and that'll force a fourth down for Emporia. Yeah, Dominguez has been the guy that's been putting the most pressure on him. Now, let's... Give their offensive line a little bit of credit. They did give him a lot of time back there, but it was just excellent coverage by that ready defense. They all draw back into coverage, allowed no passing lanes, and that's what forced the fourth down. And now it looks like they're going for it. Yeah, Wilson's in the shotgun, using the hard count, and uh, he'll back off. And Wilson's going to pooch kick it, and he'll get a nice kickoff as it's going to roll all the way down to the 36-yard line. And... That's where the Reds will take over. When you see him start to back up, backpedal, backpedal a little bit, you know that he's going to pooch kick. Let's go back down to the sideline for another sideline. Uh, the Fat Boys fine food sideline will go with Hunter Lively. Yeah, guys, uh, that was a nice, a decent little kick, but I don't think it, it can touch anything that, like Dallas Harrison did last week with ran again in the one yard line. Yeah, I know you're. Hey, Hunter, are you in a tunnel somewhere talking? I, I could. Uh, you said well, I've got my microphone covered up with a plastic bag. Would you like me to no, 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 I just I didn't know if, they, if that uh, umbrella that I let you use over in the ball game was bothering you or not. No, no, no. Okay, cool. 6.41 left here in the first half as Rodney Bryson's going to take the shotgun snap and he'll take it up and lose a, a yard and a half on the play. Andrew Black actually in a quarterback right now for uh, Henderson State. Yeah, Andrew Black is that, uh, he's that Tim Tebow type of receiver. Runs, runs a lot of QB draws out of the formation. We've seen Andrew Black in Hardison work uh, multiple times in a ball game. This is the first time in the playoffs that we've seen Black show up as it's second down and 12 after a two-yard loss to Bryson. Now Black's going to lose a hand on it. Uh, Ball's on the turf again, and is going to pick it up. Fourth turnover of the ball game for Henderson State, and they, they just can't hold on to the football right now. Just product of the weather. That's what it, it's... Well, you, it's, can't, you it, can't say that, though, because the boy is not having that problem. Well, they are... They, look, they fumbled the ball two times as well. They've only lost one. Yeah. So, they, they're, both teams not getting a good grip on it. So, Emporia is going to have the football at the 25-yard line in Henderson territory as it's first and 10 with 6.08 left here in the first half. As Brent Wilson brings his offense out of the on the field. First and ten. Wilson going to hand the ball. No field. Fake it to Nolte. Now throws downfield. And it's in and out of the hands of his intended target that time. It was, was Mitchell Foote. Who he dove for it, but couldn't quite get to it. And that'll bring up second down. And the rain is starting to let up a little bit here at Carpenter Haka. Foote leading the team in touchdowns with 12. And... If it hadn't been raining, that was one well within his grasp. He'd typically get one like that. Now here's a handoff to Brown straight up the middle. He'll pick up two yards on the play, and that'll bring up third down and eight for Emporia. Ready defense holding strong here, RJ, even though the uh, Emporia State has been given great field position a couple times in this game. They've started beyond their own 50 four times now. Third down and eight. As Wilson's in the shotgun, has Nolt to his right. Wilson takes the shotgun snap, takes the handoff, now throws downfield, and it's almost intercepted. Ty and Avery was right there. It goes over his hands and out of bounds. And that'll bring up fourth down for Emporia. Looks like the field goal kicking team's going to come back on, and this will be a 30, about a 36-yard field goal. Morris Williams, the intended receiver on that play. He kind of had a little window that Wilson was trying to fit it into. He just wasn't able to, to get the ball down into Williams' hand and sailed on him just a little bit. Instead of 36, it's actually going to be a 40-yard field goal as the ball will be kicked from the 30-yard line. So a 40-yard attempt as his long as a 41 kicks in the air. It's an end-over-end kick, and it is good. Straight down Broadway, and Emporia extends the lead to 13 to nothing. 5.20 to play in the first half on the Henderson State Sports Network. The state's leader of care is right here in the comfort of your own community. Baptist Health Medical Center Arkadelphia is a full-service hospital. Your state-of-the-art technology is united with highly qualified physicians and the most quality nursing staff in the region. From major surgery to minor injuries, we care for you because we're your neighbor. And 
Absolute Black by Baptist Health, Arkansas's most comprehensive and respected care network. Baptist Health Medical Center, Arkadelphia, your community hospital. You can't buy a best friend. You can love them, walk them, pet them, and care for them, whether they want you to or not. You can take a picture or 50. You can fly to the moon, travel the world, or just stay in the end. You can't buy a best friend like that, but you can adopt one. There are millions of pets waiting for a best friend just like you. Help us save them all at bestfriends.org. Ah, this is pretty awesome. Thanks for listening to the Ridges on the Vincent State Sports Network. Kicks in the air while it's actually on the ground. It's a low line drive taken by the Reddies as Dalton McLeod has it. And he's up the right side and falls down at the 40 yard line. And that's where the Reddies will have first and 10. Moving from right to left of the radio dial with 5.13 to play here in the second quarter of play. Chris Kane, the Reddies now have four turnovers here in the first half. And They've got a hold on the football. Yeah, six turnovers total. Uh, and a couple of those turnovers coming, one in the hand of a punter, one in the hand of your backup quarterback. So not things you like to see. The starter, Dallas Hardison, back in on this series after that fumble on the last one. So it's first and 10 ball to 40. Hardison's in the shotgun with three wide to the near side. As Jaquan Cole's behind him. Hardison takes a snap, gets out to Mack. Mack bounces it off his helmet and picks up a one-yard gain. He, he caught the ball three yards behind the line of scrimmage. It, he bobbled it, hit off his helmet, he picked it back up and got one yard out. Yeah, there. and you know what that bobble does? That one extra second gives the defense extra time to close in, and that's what Marcus Hofton just did. He didn't allow him to get any space there in the flat. Second down and nine for the Reddies as they're going to send three wide to the far side. Joseph Snap lined up at the 40 on the near side. Harless is in the shotgun, has Jaquan behind him. He'll hand it off to Jaquan straight up the middle, and he'll be taken down immediately after about a two-yard pickup. And so that'll bring up third down and seven for Henderson State. And Lane's starting to come back a little bit harder here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium with 425 and counting left here in the first half of play. Hardison lines up in the shotgun with three wide to the far side. Hardison now checks back over to the sideline to get a new play. Ready well, so far in the ball game. They've only had three first downs in the game. Cole lines up behind him as there's 10 on the play clock. Hardison takes a snap. Now fumbles it, picks it back up though. Rolls to his right side, goes back up the middle and falls down for a one-yard gain. And now that'll bring up fourth down. Miscue miss after miscue for the Reddies. Fifth total fumble of the day for the Reddies, too. Lost three, total five fumbles. This has just been a rough outing so far in the first half. It really has. Now Evan Laster, who's had a rough day as well, he's fumbled a, a snap and he had one blocked. He'll line up at the 30-yard line looking to kick off to Kowalski Irvin. Excuse me, that's actually Mitchell Foote who stands at the 25-yard line. Now Laster, Lasker is going to take the kick. Now kicks it. It's a high, wobbly kick that will be caught by Mitchell at the 23-yard line. And so that's where Emporia is going to have it first and 10 with 3.11 left here in the first half of play. You notice there, Lasker, he didn't try to catch the ball with his hands. He let it come into his body after the last one slipped through his hands. So doing a good job there, making sure he secured it. Unfortunately, though, pulling it down for the punt, that takes another second. That's why it looked like three guys were about to block it. He was fortunate enough to get it off before they got there. So it'll be first and 10. They're going to officially spot the ball at the 24-yard line. As Brent Wilson's in the shotgun, he'll send one wide receiver to each side. Wilson going to hand the ball off. Straight up the middle to Brown. And right in the backfield is Grady Allison, who takes it down for a four-yard loss. Grady Allison waiting for him like he's just invited him over to his house. Come on in. I'm waiting. Tackles him for a great loss there on first down. So it's second down and 14 for Emporia now as the ball is all the way back to the 20-yard line. 2.48 and counting. Going to hand the ball to Brown again. He's going to stretch it left side. Brown gets past one defender. Then Allison's right there. He gets past Allison and dives forward and almost picks up the first down. Picks up 13 yards on the play. He's a yard short of the first down and that went third down and one. They just slipped past everybody on that one. There were about 15 hands that touched him. Unfortunately, he was able to carry his weight forward, breaking every tackle along the way. It was really an impressive run. 
So third down and one for Emporia. And they look to the sideline for the play. 2-11 and counting. Wilson takes a snap, hands off to Noll, straight up the middle, spin move, gets the first down, and falls forward out to the 39-yard line. Not like a little wrecking ball. Had the same momentum once he touched the ball to where he was tackled, and it looks like we have uh, a Hornet down on the field. That's number 80, their tight end, Trenton Ball. Yeah, he's holding his right leg, and so Let's go down to Hunter for another Fat Boys Fine Food Sideline Report. Hunter. One of the guys in this ready defense that's really come to play the last two weeks is Ty and Avery. If you recall last week against Sioux Falls, he had the game clinching interception. He's also got the Reddy's low interception today as well, guys. Yeah, he did. He has played well so far. Ty and Avery got that interception earlier in the ball game, but that's really kind of been the only bright spot for the Reddy so far here in the first half. They, it's been a, an, a, really a turnover fest for the Reddy. Yeah. And they've had five fumbles, lost three. Uh, the offense has not been able to get anything going. Total yards for the Rays in the first half, 12 yards. 12 total yards of offense in the first half. They've rushed the ball for negative 26 yards and passed the ball for 38 yards. Only three first downs, 0 for 7 on third down so far. And not, neither team playing well in this weather, but when you compare them, it looks like Emporia State's outplaying them miles and miles ahead. Well, when you talk about Emporia State, they were a team that was a, a throwing team. Yeah. Uh, so far in the first half, Emporia's thrown the ball for six yards. Uh, I mean, this is a team that, that really didn't run the football all that much throughout the season. And they didn't have to with a Harlan Hill Kansas. Yes, and he has not had to do anything today. In fact, Brett Wilson is three of eight for six yards and an interception. They have 107 rushing yards on the day. A pretty impressive outing for their two backs, Antonio Brown and Landon Nault. Extending these drives, that's what those two backs have done so well, is maybe not getting the big, big gains, but at least extending them, even on third and long. So Emporia now has it first and 10. Balls in the 39-yard line, one to two minutes to play in the first half. Wilson going to hand the ball off to Nault. Nault works the left side, and... Finally is drugged down for about a three-yard gain, and so that'll bring up second down and seven for Emporia. Down to a minute 36 and counting. Emporia leads Henderson State 13 to nothing. We were looking over the stats, and man, it's just been a, a rough, rough day. As the Rays, have, the only thing they're really leading in right now is time of possession. The Rays have had it for 15 minutes. Wilson hands the ball off. No, he fakes it to Noel. Now goes downfield, has a man, and. It was broken up, but there's no penalty. No, he did catch it. He did catch the football. That was Mitchell Foote who caught the football. No, no that was actually Kowalski Irvin who caught the football down to the 20-yard line. I don't know how he caught that football. Oh, an incredible catch there. He leads the team in receiving yards coming into this game with 1,100, and he was able to adjust there because it was a little underthrown, and he even fought off the defender to make that catch diving. So it boy has the 20-yard line as Wilson is in the shotgun. They're going to hand it to Nolt. Nolt works the right side now back at the middle. And he'll be taken down shy of the 15-yard line. That'll be a five-yard gain. It'll bring up second down. And we've got whistles, and they're going to stop the clock at 55 seconds. Looks like they're calling a time. Emporia State calling a timeout here. Okay, we'll take it with them. 55 seconds left here in the first half. 13-0. Emporia leads Henderson on the Henderson State Sports Network. Suits, we've all got them, but we really hate wearing them. So why would you want to bank with people that have to wear suits every day? At Southern Bank Corp, we take a casual approach to banking. No suits required here. We realize not every customer is going to fit the corporate mold. That's why we can customize loans and accounts. We need the ID to a box or into a suit. We aren't your typical stuffy bankers. Just friendly, laid-back people here to help you. We cater to all kinds of suits around here, but you can leave your birthday suit at home. Southern Bank Corp, building communities, changing lives. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Hey, parents of children with asthma, there's another hit from the Breathe Easies. Hey, to come back out. You got it. Protecting asthma attacks can be as simple as make mm -hmm. five seconds. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. Wilson takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw, looks to left side, now rolls to his right, still on his feet, he falls down, and they pick up about three yards on the play, and so that'll bring up third down. Wilson had an open running lane. They're going to stop the clock with 43 seconds left, 
And it'll be a timeout charged in Poria. That's their second timeout of the half. And with that, we'll take another timeout. 13-0 in Poria leads Henderson on the Henderson State Sports Network. Do you have an idea that you would like to see on the t-shirt? Thanks to come back out here. can help you turn your idea into a reality. Okay, we still have the ID to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Media also does embroidery and engraving. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street or call 246-3803. Print Media, proud supporters of Henderson State University. The Monroe High School Band has recently received an official nomination to march in the Memorial Day Parade next May 2016 in Washington, D.C. This is such a prestigious honor for our band directors and our band, as well as our community and state. To make this happen, we need your help. The total cost to travel will be $133,000. If you would like to help make this happen for our much-deserving students, please make donations to Monroe High School Band, P.O. Box 13552, Monroe, Arkansas, 721. Five seconds. Spoke at Monroe High School Band. Or mail directly to Monroe High School attention band. 43 seconds left here in the first half and Poirier has it third down and four at the ball spot at the 14 yard line. Wilson takes a shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, looks to throw, now he's going to roll to his right, still on his feet, still running out to the 10 and out of bounds at right around the nine yard line. He'll pick up the first down and it'll be a first and goal for Emporia as the ball is going to be officially spotted at the nine yard line. 36 seconds left here in the first half. Got to find a way to get a stop here. Force a turnover. You don't get the ball back to start the second half, and you want to make sure you don't make it a, a three-score game. First and goal. Wilson in the shotgun. Now looks over to the sideline for a sign. Now moves Nolt to the left side of him in the shotgun. Two receivers to each side. Wilson's going to hand the ball off to Nolt. Nolt's still on his feet, and he'll be taken down at around the eight-yard line. And so the clock rolls as the boy has one timeout remaining, down to 25 seconds and counting. Wilson trying to get the offense back to the line of scrimmage, down to 20 seconds remaining. Wilson in the shotgun snap, sends two wide either side. Wilson takes the snap, looks to throw, now throws it in the end zone, and it's going to be in out of the hands of his intended, rece intended receiver, Mitchell Foote, with six seconds remaining in the first half, and they're going to bring on the field goal unit to kick the field goal. Foote had it right there. He tried to catch it with his body to secure it, but it bounced right off his right shoulder pad, and he's not able to come down with what would have been a big touchdown for them to take an even more of an extended lead heading into halftime, now trying to settle for three. Check in at the half with... Uh, well, this is Great American Conference Commissioner Will Pruitt will join us at the halftime. It's all coming up here in six seconds. As coming on to kick is Austin Morton. He's missed one so far today, but he's kicked two others. And Morton lines up and kicks the football. It's in over in, and it's good. It's a good, and with three seconds remaining, Emporia now has taken a 16 to nothing lead, and let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the Henderson State Sports Network. It was a 25-yard field goal by Austin Morton to give Emporia State a 16 to nothing lead with three seconds remaining here in the first half of play. And boy, I don't think the Reddies could, they, they can't wait to get back to the locker room to re, kind of regroup and, and get the second half going. Yeah, you know, you only hope here is if uh, you're able to find a little bit of space on the kickoff. And, you know, Corn Chappelle, he had a really nice kickoff return earlier. He's shown he, he's got the wheels to go all the way. It's just one of those situations where they're going to avoid kicking to him at all costs with only three seconds left on the clock. And also of note, since Jacoby Lewis is still injured on the sidelines, he's got a towel over his head. His return does not look good to this ball game. So filling in for him, running back Kalen Peters now at the kickoff out of Little Rock, Arkansas. 5'10 freshman. So now on to kick for employees. It's going to be Justin Marche puts yeah. the ball on the ground. It goes out of bounds. And that takes no time off the clock, and so the Reddies will get the ball at the 40-yard line. I would just imagine they're going to take a kneel down and get to the half. And it'll be interesting to hear what Coach Maxfield has to say here at the half as our own Hunter Lively will catch up with him as he heads to the locker room. And, you know, anytime you turn the ball over, uh, you have five fumbles in a game, and you turn the ball over four times, that's not good for anybody. No, that's... 
that's it's going to be one of those two, one of these half times where you got to reset mentally. You know, you got to get everybody in the locker room and, and, and understand this is a two score game, two yeah. touchdowns and, and and two point conversions. So. It looks like the Reddies here are going to run a play. Yeah, as Hardison takes a shotgun snap, looks to throw. Hardison under pressure as he gets it off to Jaquan Cole at the 40-yard line. Cole is going to step out of bounds at the 45, and that's going to do it for the first half of the play. It was a pickup of 10 yards in the play, and let's head down to the sideline now with Hunter Lively, who's with Coach Scott Maxfield. Hunter. Coach Maxfield, there in the first half, turnover really seemed to be an issue. Whether a huge part of that, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I don't know. We've had five turnovers, had two punt miscues. Uh, lucky to be 16 to zero. So, just got to regroup. The kids are still fighting hard. We can come back. We got to get something going on offense. Hard to throw the ball, so we're going to have to get that run game going. Jaquan Cole really in that run game kind of been bottled up. What adjustments need to be made at halftime in order to, to get him in the open field? Well, the offensive line's got to block somebody. I mean, he can't run over four of them, so he's getting hit quick. So we got to get on those offensive lines so we can block somebody in the second half. All right, thanks, coach. Good luck. Thank you, Hunter Lively. As Coach Maxfield taking his his guys down to the locker room, down 16 to nothing as we start the half. When we come back, I'll have a sit-down conversation with the commissioner of the Great American Conference, Will Pruitt, as we are at the half, 16 to nothing on the Henderson State Sports Network. <laughs> Henderson State Ready Apparel Souvenir. Stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. For your convenience, the Ready Bookstore is open for every Ready football game. And students save money on textbooks at the Ready Bookstore, where you can purchase, rent, and sell back textbooks every day. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday. We also have HSU apparel for kids, gift items, and alumni items. Find us on Facebook at Ready Bookstore or online at www.hsubooks.com. Ready for another season of hard-hitting game day parties? Hunger is ready, ready to strike without mercy. Whether you join the party at a tailgate or in your own living room, Subway Catering's lineup includes giant subs, sandwich platters, cookie platters, chips and drinks, everything you need to crush hunger and score a touchdown for football fans everywhere. So get in there. Subway, eat fresh. Catering orders must be placed 24 hours in advance. See participating store for details. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A covenant that split the skies over Berlin. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A promise was made. A solemn oath that liberated Seoul. A sacred trust that defended Quezon. A pact that dug in and demanded. A contract that weathered Tet. A promise was made. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. A bond that patrolled door to door in Florida. An idea that drained the way of hands in the A promise was made to America's veterans. A promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earn. If you're a veteran who needs help, or you want to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org. You aspire. Dreams drive each of us. Whether you want to be an accountant or a teacher, a nurse or an artist, ambitions can become a reality at Henderson State University. We empower. At Henderson, we empower students with the tools to excel. We offer more than 70 majors, including the state's only four-year aviation program and a variety of academic support resources. In addition, we offer classes at the new Hot Springs Downtown Education Center. You achieve. A student-centered focus makes Henderson more than a university. We're a community that prepares you for a successful career and life. To learn how Henderson can transform your aspirations into lifelong achievements, visit hsu.edu. Hey, Ready fans, this is Jaquan Cole. Thanks for listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. We are at the half as Henderson State trails Emporia State by a score of 16 to nothing. I'm RJ Hawk as it's now... 
time for the Zions of Wealth Halftime Show. And joining us here at the half is Commissioner Will Pruitt of the Great American Conference. Will, great to have you on. Thank you. Appreciate being someplace where it's dry. <laughs> yeah, you've been down on the sideline with your rain gear on. You look like you just got done at SeaWorld or something playing with Shamu with all the water on you and uh, that, that rain gear. I was say, as long as you're not saying I look like <laughs> Shamu, we're good. Hey, Will, you know, uh, Henderson State got a win last week. Uh, picked up the conference's first playoff win. Uh, really had to be a proud moment for you as the commissioner and really for everybody across the Great American Conference because I finally got that first national playoff win. Yeah, you know, that was really kind of a monkey. And, you know, RJ, there's been you know, some great shots the past couple of years. Washita, the overtime game against, against Minnesota State that, or against Minnesota Duluth, that they had every opportunity a game that you know, I think it's really a sore spot here at Henderson State, a game that they should have won against St. Cloud a few years ago. Harding last season up 21 nothing at Pitt State, driving with a chance to really put some distance in that game. And you know, to finally you know, get across that bridge is a big deal for the conference. You know, you look at today's game, and, and really I wouldn't say that Emporia is all that much better than Henderson in this game. And everything's been self-inflicted, and I don't... I guess you could blame it on the rain, but they're both having to play in the rain in this game as the Reds have five fumbles in this ball game, four turnovers uh, overall. I, what, what's your assessment of how the Reds stack up to Emporia so far? You know, RJ, that's really you know kind of a death knell for a team that thrives on forcing turnovers. I believe plus 17 yeah. coming into this game, and you know when you're on the opposite end, particularly in a big game. You know, both teams are playing in the conditions. You know, credit Emporia that, you know, outside of the pick early in the game and one fumble, they've held on to the ball. And, you know, the later you get in the playoffs, you know, it's a totally different game than it was 25, 30 years ago. The field, you know, people spread the field, you know, throw, throw all over the place. But, man, when you get into late November, December, yeah. you know, special teams, defense, holding on to the ball, you know, those things are still constants. And, you know, two of the three, Henderson State's been outplayed. And, you know, lots of credit, though, to the ready defense that, you know, they could really be in a hole that, you know, they've played fairly well. Yeah. Um, you know, when you look uh, over the, the rest of the conference, you know, I, I think that for the most part, especially in football this year, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was an up, up year for the conference, I would say, just because you had more competition. You didn't really have anybody, even though Henderson ran out uh, later on in the, in the year with the lead, but it was pretty competitive throughout the year. you got to be happy about that. Yeah, you, know, you can make an argument that, you know, the very top maybe wasn't as strong as it has been in the past couple of years. You know, certainly when you get into that middle of the league, you know, there were, there were eight pretty decent football teams in the league, and even those bottom four, you you know, Oklahoma Baptist, new program into the league, really had some positive moments. You know, you look they almost at, beat Harding the first game of the year. You know, played, played really well yeah. against you guys. Yeah. Um, you know, you see a lot of progress at Northwestern Oklahoma State with where that program's coming. Um, you know, and even, you know, the big win for Southern Nazarene, yeah. you know, talking about monkeys off some of the back. <laughs> yes. You know, it's been, well, I guess it was a 30-game uh, losing streak that they had snapped, so uh, it was nice to see them. Uh, I guess that was that against Oklahoma Baptist, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, now you transition. You've got uh, you go from football into basketball, and basketball's underway full force. I, I imagine uh, you know you look at especially on the women's side of basketball. Um, the Arkansas Tech right now nationally ranked in women's basketball. Uh, it's going to be a good year for basketball. Yeah, I think so. Picked up some some good non-conference wins. You know, obviously the Division Two regional structure; those are so important. Um, you know, I was rooting for Southeastern Oklahoma. They were on the road to um, to number twelve in um, Central Missouri last night. Lost on the three-pointer at the buzzer, but you know we've picked up some really nice non-conference wins. And you know people overlook that early part of basketball season and. It's, a, it's another conversation for another day. Um, you know, there's lots of people, um, you know, Division One. I think even at our level, you know, you know, this part of the season really tends to get lost, but they're really important games, particularly in Division Two, where most of us you know, are already playing a few conference games. Yeah. And, you know, but big games, you know, excited. Another weekend of conference basketball next weekend. Another weekend of conference football, win or lose by the Reddies this weekend. Yeah. Um, next weekend with 
Southwestern Oklahoma playing in the Living United Bowl down in Texarkana and Arkansas Tech playing down in Copper Grove, Texas. Yep, for the, uh, the Heart of Texas Bowl. So, well, we appreciate you joining us at the half. Hey, go down and stay dry. Would you do that for us? That's, uh, I mean, like I said, you you look like somebody got a water hose and just sprayed you down before you came up here. Hey, I, I'm actually dry under all this, but you know, I would I would trade being dry for a couple of touchdowns. Yes, I, I'm right there with you. We are at the half. That is Will Pruitt, the commissioner of the Great American Conference. 16 to nothing, Emporia State leads Henderson on the Henderson State Sports Network. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward in treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. Arkadelphia Super Smiles is located at 280 Professional Park Drive, Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. I'm Sean Johnson, I'm a big gymnast. I was born with an APGAR score of zero, but I went on to win gold. Every baby deserves that chance, to grow up and shine. That's what March of Dimes is all about. Help me and the March of Dimes fight premature birth and birth defects. Let's work together for stronger, healthier babies. To get involved or to make a gift, visit marchofdimes.com. I thought I was too old. I thought I was too young. I didn't think I had what it takes. How would I find the time? I figured I'd get around to it someday. Besides, it's probably too expensive. Too difficult. Too complicated. Then one day I sat down at the piano. Drums. Keyboard. Guitar. Bass. Ukulele. I went into a music store and tried some percussion. Tried a clarinet. A sax. And I learned a few simple notes. A simple chords, simple rhythms. Before I knew it. I could actually play a song. A pretty simple one. But I did it. Me. I couldn't believe it. Why make excuses when you can make music? Why wait? Just play. This message brought to you by the Mellon Foundation. Thanks for listening to the 2015 Henderson State Buddies. This is Joseph Snap. Now let's send it to Phil and RJ. Welcome back, everybody. Chris Kane here filling in today as Phil Elson is out of town on other obligations, filling in you on your halftime stats, your Zizer Wealth halftime statistics, your halftime stats provided by Zizer Wealth Management. At Zizer Wealth Management, we help our clients grow, protect, and harvest their wealth. Let us show you the difference. Learn more at ZizerWealth.com. The score 16 to nothing in favor of number 18, Emporia State, coming into this game with a 10 and 2 overall record. And knowing that the weather was going to be less than favorable for their passing attack, they switched to the ground game in the first half, led by Antonio Brown. 10 carries, 62 yards, including a long of 23, averaging 5.9 yards per carry. Behind him, Landon Nault, nine carries for 42 yards, a 4.7 average, and their Harlan Hill candidate, Brent Wilson, really held in the passing game. Only four completions on 10 attempts, one interception. He's got 44 yards on the game. He has been sacked once. Now looking at your Henderson State Reddies, their ground game was led by your Great American Conference Player of the Year, but he's only got 31 yards on the day. And that, uh, excuse me, 22 yards on the day, 12 carries, 22 yards, only 1.8 the average right now for Cole. Jacoby Lewis, who is injured and is likely to be out the rest of the game, second in rushing, one carry for only five yards. Um, looking now at the passing game, Dallas Hardison, five attempts, or excuse me, five completions, 14 yards, one interception, 48 yards through the air today. On the receiving end of those, Jaquan Cole, the running back, the do-it-all back today. Three receptions, 42 yards, including a 10-yarder as half was running to an end there. Halftime was about to start, so uh, his long of 24 today. Joseph Snap, one for five, and Javante Mack, one reception for one yard so far. In the defensive department for Henderson State, Lawson Schultz leading the way with seven total tackles. Then Trevon Del Rio, Kendrick Burns, and, De and Donovan McLeod all have four on the day. Looking at the scoring drives, 
All in the second quarter. It was a scoreless first quarter today, but at 13-12, Austin Morton put the first points on the board with a 41-yard field goal for the Hornets. Then at 11-36, a fumbled snap went over the head of Evan Lassiter. It was picked up by Eddie Vincent of Emporia State in the end zone, and that made it 10 to nothing. With 5.20 left before the half, Austin Morton kicked another 40-yard field goal. That made it 13 to nothing. And with three seconds remaining, Morton added on with his third field goal of the day, a 25-yarder. And that is where we find ourselves now, folks. 16 to nothing in this one. About seven minutes before the second half begins. We'll be back with more after this. I was ready for college, to be out on my own, meet people who aren't just like my high school friends, to study what I wanted to study at a university I could afford. I was ready for Henderson State University. Are you? Take a virtual tour and apply online at GetReady.com. That's G-E-T-R-E-D-D-I-E.com. Or you can call 1-800-228-7333 for information about Henderson State University. Let's listen in the locker room to see what Coach thought about the controversial call at the end of the game. I'm not allowed to comment on lousy officiating, but the trouble with the referees is they just don't care who wins. And the only guys I know can rob you and get a police escort out of town. And remember, the result of the game, not final until the other team's check clears the ref's bank. Come on down to Hot Springs, Coach. You'll get a fair shake on comfortable rooms, great meals, and fun activities for the whole family. Hot Springs has all the fun. Follow Hot Springs on social media or plan your trip at visithotsprings.org. I'm Phyllis Dills, Public Affairs Specialist for the Social Security Administration. I'm here to tell you about my... Um, one more, uh, yeah, one more after this one. Okay, so I'll be quick. Social Security information you need the most. Use your account to get a copy of your Social Security statement, including your earnings record and estimates of future benefits. If you already get Social Security, there's even more you can do. So visit us at www.socialsecurity.gov slash myaccount. Hi, I'm John Schneider. Sick and injured kids deserve every chance to get better. And at your Children's Miracle Network Hospital, they get the best care and even the hope for a miracle. Every day, they're giving kids near you the chance to walk, to talk, to laugh, and to smile again. And you can too. There's no better place, there's no better time. Give today and put your money where the miracles are. Go to cmnhospitals.org. Listening to 2015 Ready Football. This is Josh Davis. And here's Phil and Audrey. Welcome back to Carpenter Haygood Stadium where the rain is really starting to come down now. 16 to nothing is our score as Emporia State leads Henderson State. And I would imagine you're going to see a lot of adjustments from the Reddies at the half. Let's go ahead and take one more quick break. When we come back, we'll have second half action. Live from the second round of the Division II playoffs on the Henderson State Sports Network. Is this a one minute or two minute? You aspire us to okay, good. each Thanks. of us. Whether you want to be an accountant or a teacher, a nurse or an artist, ambitions can become a reality at Henderson State University. We empower. At Henderson, we empower students with the tools to excel. We offer more than 70 majors, including the state's only four-year aviation program and a variety of academic support resources. In addition, we offer classes at the new Hot Springs Downtown Education Center. You achieve. A student-centered focus makes Henderson more than a university. We're a community that prepares you for a successful career and life. To learn how Henderson can transform your aspirations into lifelong achievements, visit hsu.edu. We were rolling down this road in Anbar Province. Three personnel carriers with 16 of us on board. All of a sudden, there was a huge explosion. We knew right away it was an IED. The first vehicle got wasted. And those guys took a, a huge hit. Then we started taking sniper fire and RPGs from the hills. In today's military, women face the same dangers as men. It's pretty amazing. We made it out alive. 
but when they come home, women veterans confront a whole different set of challenges, like unique health care issues, or not receiving respect or even acknowledgement for serving in harm's way. DAV understands the problems women veterans face, and we can help. Many DAV advisors are female veterans. They've been there, and they're ready to provide expert guidance. DAV fights to get you the health, disability, and financial benefits you were promised and earned. If you're a veteran, visit DAV.org for free help. Hey, this is Kenny Burns. Welcome back to Ready for Dawn and the Innocent State Sports Network. 16 to nothing is our score, and Poirier State leads Henderson as both teams are back out on the field. And see Dallas Hardison down on the field warming up with Andrew Black. And Chris, your, your thoughts on the first half of play? Lots of turnovers, RJ. Back to you. <laughs> no, I, that, that is the storyline, though. I mean, it's one that it's going to follow this team. Five total fumbles for Henderson State, two for uh, Emporia State. Look, we, we knew coming into this game the weather would be bad, but you cannot afford to, uh, to fumble the ball this often. And RJ, here's the issue with the fumbles. A lot of it is just not being able to get a grasp on the ball. They're not even forced fumbles. Yeah. They're just dropping the ball on the snap, letting it fly through your hands on a punt. I mean, it's those kind of fumbles that have hurt this Henderson, Henderson State team. And when, it, when it comes to forced fumbles, there haven't been a lot for Henderson State. It's unforced. Yeah, no, you're right, and you know the Reddy defense has really done a good job on on this uh, on this offensive employer. I mean, uh, granted they've run the ball for 100 and what 122 yards so far in this ball game, and they've only allowed 44 passing yards. But you got to think there were some areas when when employer was deep into Reddy territory that they forced a you know fourth and, uh, turnover on downs or, or got a turnover. And, uh, the Reddy defense has played well. They've just been out there a lot. Yeah, they, and they've been put in some situations, too, where they've been starting their, their defensive stand in their own territory several times. So they're not given a big field to work with. Let's go down to Hunter real quick. I just saw where Mark Chaus has his shoulder pads off on the sideline. Do you have an injury report, Hunter? Yeah, Chaus will be out for the remainder of the game. I believe he's got a right ankle injury, and uh, Jacoby Lewis not, not uh, able to return here in the second half, most likely, guys. Well, that's, uh, that's a big blow for the Reddies having Mark Chaus out of the ball game, who uh, Chaus the last two weeks of the season, and have caught, he's caught instrumental touchdowns, had a big one, one-handed catch against Washtaw two weeks ago, and then last week had a big touchdown against Sioux Falls, and uh, the Reds will be without him the rest of the ball game. So the Reds will be kicking off to start the second half of play after they received the ball in the first half, and it we'll, uh, looks like they'll be kicking off from left to right of your radio dial, and we're just about set and ready to go as both teams have made it back to the respected sidelines, and... You ready for second half of action? That one seemed like it was a quick moving first half, didn't it? Now the first quarter seemed like it went a little slow because the ball just kept going back and forth uh, in terms of turnovers. But the second half, I think once both teams started realizing the weather conditions were not going to be, uh, you know, part of their passing attack plan, they finally started running the ball more, which ran the clock down. We'll see what they try to do in the second half. Henderson State kicking off to Emporia State. I mean, they're all world quarterback. They're Harlan Hill candidate, only throwing the ball ten total times, four completions, 44 yards, including including one interception earlier in the game. We'll see what kind of action they give him in the second half now with a two-score lead. So Houston Ray has his hand in the air, and he'll put a foot into it, and we're underway for the second half of action here in the second round of the Division II playoffs. Taking the football for Emporia is MJ Mathis, and he'll be upended at the 26-yard line. And it looks like there's a scrum going on on the far side. We've got a penalty flag as there was a double team oh, no. on, on, I believe that was on Darius Thomas, and now we'll see what the penalty flag is. Well, Darius Thomas was being pushed backwards by two guys well after the play, and he ended up pushing one of them off of them. Yeah. The, guy, the man fell to the ground, and the line judge feeling like he needs to throw a flag for that. If, all i got to say is if, if that penalty flag is on Demarius Thomas, or on, on Darius Thomas, then that, that is terrible officiating. That is awful. And Coach Maxfield's out on the field trying to get an explanation, and let's see what the, uh, let's see what the call is. They're marking this penalty flag off against Henderson. Oh, unsportsmanlike conduct against Henderson. No, offsides. Oh, they're going to say offsides. Now they're going to come up with the unsportsmanlike there conduct is. penalty against Henderson. Wow. 
That is unbelievable. That, that is terrible officiating. What are you supposed to do? Just fall to the ground? He's being pushed backwards 10 yards after the whistle. Five. And he just pushed one of them off because he was being pushed backwards. And he gets called for the flag. By two. They weren't just one player. There was two of them. Two of them. And, and, and he was just trying to get them off of them. Well, there's the World Star Conference for you. Wow. That needs to be looked at. The NCAA needs to, to look into that. That is terrible. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I don't know what you're supposed to do. There, there's nothing he could do. That is terrible. So now Brent Wilson's going to be in the shotgun. He'll have Brown to his backside. They'll hand it off to Brown. Brown comes to the near side. He's after the 50, a penalty flag down. And he's after the 49. It's a pick of a five. And let's see if they throw another penalty flag on Henderson. No, five. that's going to be a hold on Emporia State. I'm glad his eyes worked for that play. So it's going to be a hold against Emporia. And that'll back him up 10 yards. So... They're going to back it up from the spot of the foul, which is at the 47-yard line. It should have been at the line there. There he goes. Yeah, then now he's going to mark it off from the 46, which was the original line of scrimmage. And that will back him up to the 36-yard line, where it will be first down and 20 now. Just underway in the third quarter of play. As Brent Wilson's in the shotgun, he puts Nolk to his left side. He'll hand it off. No fakes the handoff. Now passes down the right side. And the ball's in the air. It's intercepted by the ladies. Here's Taryn Avery. It's his second pick of the ball game. Big interception there, RJ. And you know, Wilson had to put everything he had into that throw. Still not enough to get over the defensive coverage. Great pick there as he was just sitting in waiting for the ball to come to him. Well, that's the 29th interception of the year for the Reddies. And... Now going to have the ball first and 10 from the 32-yard line. Interesting play call there to go big ball. When you, that hasn't worked for him all game long. Everything that's worked in the passing game has been short and out in the flats. Going big ball, and they made him pay there. Henderson State with a big interception. So Dallas Hardison takes the ball first and 10 from the 32-yard line. Hardison's in the shotgun. As Ryan McDonald to his right, they're going to hand it off to Jaquan Cole. Cole straight up the middle, and he got a yard on a play, and that'll bring up second down and nine. So second down, and by the way, that last interception for Brent Wilson is now his 14th of the season. When you look at Wilson, he came in with 39 touchdown passes thrown. And 12 interceptions. He's thrown two interceptions today. Yeah, this, these conditions do not help that offense and what they're used to do. And, and that's passing the ball in all aspects of, of the game and uh, everywhere on the field. Here's Hardison looking to throw. A three-step drop now. He'll throw downfield. He's got snap, and it's in and out of his hands. As on the coverage that time for Emporia was A.J. West, and so that'll bring up third down and nine now. And another, another one that's underthrown. That's, both these underthrows are products of the weather. These quarterbacks can't get a good grip on the ball and throw it as far as they're used to. So even though they can throw the ball that far, these weather conditions aren't going to let you get all the way, and that one just underthrown by about a yard. Third down and nine. 13.45 left here in the third quarter is... Hardison stands five yards behind the line of scrimmage with Jaquan Cole behind him. Here's Hardison, fakes the handoff, now rolls to his right. Hardison's going to throw, it's under throw, but caught by a snap, now it's in and out of his hands. He had to make a sliding catch, and it just fell out of his hands. Hardison was under pressure, and it's a punting situation for the Reddies. I'll tell you what, Jaquan Cole made a fantastic block on that play, picking up the blitz, giving Hardison just a little bit of extra time. Unfortunately, he had to roll out of the pocket and wasn't able to plant his foot to get the ball all the way there. So it's fourth down and nine. 16 nothing's our score. Emporia leads Henderson. And Laster's going to stand at the 19-yard line. It's a low snap. He loses the handle on it. It's a terrible kick. It's an awful kick. And he goes all the way out at the 46-yard line. And for the Reddies, that is a 25-yard punt. Not the worst of the game. It's not the worst of the game, no, but we've seen worse today. It's a 25-yard punt from where he punted it from. Let's put it that way. Still not the worst of the game. No, that's a good point. It's a good point. So once again, Emporia State starting in ready territory for this one. So now it's first and 10 ball. It's spotted at the 44-yard line. Here's Nolt straight up the middle, and he's 
will be taken down past the first down marker at the 35-yard line. Picks up 11 on the play. And so that'll bring up a new set of downs. I tell you what, Nall, Nall is not a patient runner, but that's benefited him in this game. Takes the snap again. Nall straight up the middle, still running, and takes it down to the 31-yard line. It's a pick up of five yards this time. And it's brings up second down and five for Emporia. Nall, once he sees the smallest window opening, he plows through the line, and that's really worked out for him up the middle in these past two series. They're gonna say he only got four, so it's second down and six. Here's Nault up the left side. Nault gonna be taken down just shy of the 25-yard line. That's a, about a yard shy of the first down, and he was taken down that time by Gary Vines for Henderson. And so that's gonna be a third down and one for Emporia. Nault's a big back. When you look at him, he, uh, he's not tall, but he's stocky. 5'9", 191. Takes a snap again. Straight up the middle, and he gets the first down as he dives forward and gets down to the 24-yard line. So a fresh set of downs for Emporia with 12-26 and counting left here in the third quarter of play. Emporia going back to the ground game after that interception. They run it every single play of this series. We'll see if they continue that with Brown in the game now. Range really coming down here at Carpenter Haygood. Shotgun snap. Giving off to Brown now. Brown straight up the middle, and he's going to be stopped in his tracks that time by Alan Tatum. And so that'll bring up second down after a pickup of two yards on the play to bring up second down at eight. If you're Henderson State right now, you sell out on the run and let your defensive backs do their job and do what they've done best all season long. Make them beat you through the air. Second down and eight, Brent Wilson in the shotgun, has Brown behind him, one receiver to each side of the formation. Now pulls Brown to the right side, hands it to Brown, straight at the middle, still running, finally taken down at the 14-yard line. That's right there at the first down marker, and let's see if they're going to, where they're going to mark it officially. I think they're going to mark it about a half a yard shy of the yeah. first down. They're gonna, that's going to bring up third and third and short. Yeah, so they're going to put it at the 15-yard line, so it'll be third down and one. And so Brent's going to stay in the shotgun. He'll take the shotgun snap, give it to Brown. Brown dives forward, picks up the first down, and gets all the way down to the 13-yard line. Well, Emporia State doing a good job here of eating up the clock and extending every single drive. They've been running the ball in every play, not one pass attempt yet on this series. Brent Wilson has worked out of the shotgun this entire drive so far as it's got a fresh set of downs. You can get the first down at the three-yard line. Here's the shotgun snap. Gives the null. Null goes left side. He's hit the backfield and finally taken down that time by Gary Vines in the backfield. And so that is a four-yard loss on the play to bring up second down at 14. And to grab Nault by the leg there and hold on to him. And he was able to kind of drive him to the ground because Nault's a short and stocky guy. He's very well built. And so the only way to get him down is to go low. That's only the third tackle for loss for Gary Vines this season. Third and 14, 10-28 left in the third. Nault moves up to the right side of Wilson. He takes the handoff, goes left side with it. Wilson, or excuse me, Nault takes it all the way down to the 13-yard line. That's back to the original line of scrimmage. And that brings up third down and 10 now for Emporia. Well, third and 10, and they've yet to throw a pass. We'll see what they try and do here up 16 to nothing. Will they try to air it out, or will they just stick with the ground game, get as much as they can, and then either go for it because you're close or kick another field goal? They've already got four on the day. Well, Brett Wilson's yeah. already thrown two interceptions so far as he lines up third and 10. We're under 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Wilson looks at the sideline to get the sign. Now move, moves Nall to his right side. Receiver split wide to each side. Here's Wilson with a shotgun snap. Looks to throw. Now rolls to his right side. Wilson rolling. Flags down. And the ball's an incomplete pass. He tried to get it off to Nault. But we've got penalty flags down at the 21-yard line. And it's going to be a hold against Emporia. And that'll back him up 10 yards. And they're going to replay. They're going to accept that penalty and replay. No, they're going to. Now he's going to say it's declined. Yeah, they're going to say it's declined now. And initially, he said it was a, an accepted penalty. But now... The Reddies are going to decline the penalty. It's going to force a fourth down, and here comes the punting unit for Emporia. Well, I don't know if they're going to punt it here. They might. Well, uh, if they punt it, I meant the field goal yeah, unit. Yeah, field goal yeah. unit here. Is it well within range? Yeah. And, and if you're Scott Maxfield, you, it, 
of course you want to back them up because yeah. you know the scoring in this game is going to be kept to a minimum because of the weather. But at the same time, you don't want to risk anything anything weird happening on a third and 20. It's going to be a 30-yard field goal. The ball is going to be, it'll be down at the 20-yard line. Austin Morton's on the kick from the left hash. Snaps down, kicks in the air, and it is nothing but good. It was right down Broadway. It's now 19 to nothing. 9.31 left here in the third on the Henderson State Sports Network. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Good Media can help you turn your idea into a reality. Good Media offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Good Media also does a very integrated. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street or call 246-3803. Good Media, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Chances are you or someone you know is age-related macular degeneration or AMD. Millions of people are losing their sight to AMD, and I'm one of them. Getting that diagnosis was terrifying, but knowledge is power. Even if it doesn't run in your family, you can still get AMD. Call the Foundation Fighting Blindness at 1-800-632-2005 for a free kit about preventing and managing the disease. That's 1-800-632-2005. Hey, this is Lawson Schultz. Thanks for listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. 9.31 left here in the third quarter of play. And Boya leads 19 to nothing over Henderson State. On to kick for the Hornets, Justin Marche. A kick off from the 35-yard line. Here's the foot into it. It's a low liner that's going to... Land in the hands of Corey Chappelle. He'll take it up the 15-yard line. Chappelle up to the 30, still on his feet, and finally taken down at the 34-yard line, and that's where the Reddies will have it first and 10. Here's a look at our smart Buick Ford scoring drive. The next time you need to purchase a vehicle, make the smart drive. The smart Buick Ford in Malvern. It was an 11-play, 33-yard drive. It took 358 off the clock and ended with a 30-yard Austin Morton field goal to put the Hornets up 19 to nothing with 9.25 left in the third quarter. So the ball's at the 34-yard line, 9.25 to play in the third, 19 to nothing. As Hardison's in the shotgun, has Cole to his right side, two wide to each side. Hardison takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw, gets it out to the right side, and that's out to, I believe, that's James Jackson who's finally taken down. And I believe, yeah, on the tackle is Cole Shanky. And so it's only a two-yard pickup to bring up second down at eight now. Light rain now here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. It's just going to be on and off throughout the ball game. James Jackson only four receptions on the season for 34 yards. That'll give him five for 36. So now Dallas Hardison stands at the 31-yard line. Hardison looks to throw and puts it in the air. Going for snap, and he got tangled up on that right side with A.J. West. Falls to the turf. Ball falls to the turf, and it's now third down and eight. Yeah, and, you know, he didn't even get a good look at the ball coming his way until about the last second, only a couple seconds before it was dropping because he was tangled up with that defender. You know, Scott Maxfield not afraid of, of weather to, to test out that secondary, R.J., Throwing the ball down the sideline deep several times in this contest. Well, he's had to. He can't, he can't run the football. So far, the Reddies in this game have rushed the ball for negative 25 yards. Partially because of Laster's uh, fumble, but either way, that's all he's had. And here's another fumble. It falls out of the hands of Dallas Hardison, uh, and Emporia recovers at the 30. Another turnover. And for Emporia, or excuse me, for Henderson, Jordan Robinson was the one who recovered that thing. And for the Reddies now, that is the sixth fumble in the ball game for Frost. You look for ways to uh, overcome adversity in the game, RJ, and this this turnover turnover machine has been what, what has really cost the Reddies in this one so far. Emporia State with another great field position to start this drive, starting at the 30. So Brent Wilson puts Null to his left side. Wilson takes the snap. Now looks to throw across the middle. Finds his tight end ball. And he's taken down. I said that was ball. That was actually Nick Oliver. Takes it all the way down to the 12-yard line. That's a first down. And it's a pickup that time of 18 yards. 
Now here's the shotgun snap to Wilson. Wilson's going to keep it himself. He'll be bottled up in the backfield and finally taken down at the 17-yard line. And it'll be a loss of three yards on the play. And that'll bring up second down and 13 for Emporia. Eight minutes to play in the third quarter. 19 to nothing. Emporia leads Henderson. Josh Davis there with the tackle. He has uh, one and a half sacks on the season. A 5'11 junior from El Dorado able to push him back just a little bit. So it brings up second down. I said second and 13. They moved it back. It's now second and 15. Here's Wilson rolling to his right, looking to run. Wilson's going to just run out of bounds, and he'll pick up a couple on the play. And so for Wilson, that will bring up third down now in 13. As he runs out of bounds and stops the clock with 7.36 to play in the third. Well, that, that first half really moved by fast, but this third quarter seems like it's dragging yeah. by. And it may be because of the turnover bug by the Reddies. No question. Well, it's just like the first quarter we saw the turnovers. That's why I felt like the, uh, the quarter was going by slow. That'll definitely slow things down. We'll see if Henderson State can slow down the Hornets here. Three wide to the far side, two to the near side as Wilson's in the shotgun. Stands at the 20-yard line. Ball spotted at the 15. Comes in motion as Williams. We've got a penalty flag down as Williams goes around the right side, and he's finally taken down by Josh Davis, but I think Reddy was offside. So either that or it's either somebody's offside or it's an illegal formation on Emporia. And let's see what they say. The official's mic's not working, and it's going to be an illegal formation against Emporia. Legal shift. And so... That's going to bring them, they're going to back them up and replay third down. It was already third and 13, now it's going to be third and 18. Well, now they're going to decline it as he came over and talked to Coach Maxfield, and they're going to decline the penalty. So okay. Now that'll bring up third down and 13, or excuse me, third down and 12. They gave him a yard on the play, and now they'll flip it over and make it fourth down. So... The field goal unit's on once again as Austin Morton comes on. And Morton, he'll kick from the 20-yard line. Another 30-yard field goal for Austin Morton. He's kicking from the right hash this time. Snaps back, holds down, kick is on its way, and it's good. He's only missed one today, and he's an 89% field goal kicker, and he's done, that, done his job today. 22 to nothing, Emporia. They lead Henderson with 6.32 to play in the third on the Henderson State Sports Network. Suits, we've all got them, but we really hate wearing them. So why would you want to bank with people that have to wear suits every day? At Southern Bank Corp, we take a casual approach to banking. No suits required here. We realize not every customer is going to fit the corporate mold. That's why we can customize loans and accounts based on your wants and needs, not try to fit you into a box or into a suit. We aren't your typical stuffy bankers, just friendly, laid-back people here to help you. We catered all kinds of suits around here, but you can leave your birthday suit at home. Southern Bank Corp, building communities, changing lives. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Java Primo is amazing coffee and so much more. Visit Java Primo Coffee House Cafe and more and discover just what more is. Friday and Saturday nights are ribeye nights. 16 plus ounces of premium bone-in French cut ribeye steak, seasoned with espresso rub and grilled to perfection. Nightly dinner menus of pizza, salmon, tuna, steaks and more begins at 4 p.m. Located on Main Street in Philadelphia and on Central Avenue in Hot Springs. Java Primo has a little something more just for you. This is Mark Chouse and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. Go Reddies. Kickoff is a low liner that's going to hit right off of a ready, and that was off of Robinson, I believe, and he'll be taken down at the 30-yard line. I said it was Robinson. It was actually off of Josh Miller, and Miller will bring the ball up for the Reddies out to the 30, where the Reddies will have it first and 10. 627 left here in the third. Let's head down to Hunter Lively on the sideline for Fall Boys 5 through sideline report. Hunter. Yeah, the Henderson said in the second half, the run game hasn't worked. The pass game hasn't worked. You may try to see if you can get Corey Chappelle in a little slot action, maybe coming across and get, get a jet sweep action going. We've seen success from, that, uh, from the Reddies on that in the past. So Dallas, so that's actually, actually Andrew Black's in the ball game now for the Reddies. 
Two wide each side. They're going to hand the ball off to Javonte Monte Mack, who came in motion. Mack's trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage before he finally falls down. And so he'll actually lose a yard on the play to bring up second down and 11. I do want to tell you about the Smart Ford scoring drive. Next time you need to purchase a vehicle, make the Smart Drive to Smart Buick Ford in Malvern. Five plays, 16 yards, and ended with a 31-yard field goal, the fourth of the game by Austin Morton. Three wide to the far side for the Reddies as... Andrew Black's going to take the football. He'll keep it himself. Runs straight up the middle, and he's still on his feet all the way out to the 36-yard line where he's going to pick up five yards on the play, maybe six, and that'll bring up third down for the Reddies. It was a good job by Black there identifying the blitz and, and noticing the pocket collapsing around him. He pushed up just a little bit, gave it another second to see if the play could develop, but once he saw it wasn't going to, he did a good job by extending it out five yards. So third down and five for the Reddies. Black is in the shotgun, three wide in the near side. Now he'll look to throw. Has a man down at the 42-yard line, and making the catch that time for the Reddies was Javante Mack. Nice job by Andrew Black. Is That's a fresh set of downs for the Reddies. That is only the fifth first down for the Reddies this game, and the first in quite a while for this team. They got a couple, one because of a penalty in the first quarter and a couple in the second quarter, but this is the first time we've seen them extend the chains in a long time. Here's the first down. They hand it off to Javante Mack. Mack comes right side with it. Mack gets finally taken down the backfield, that time by J.P. Lorenz, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and it brings up second down and ten. And no room to work for Mack there. The defend defenders were ready for him at the line of scrimmage and pushed him back a couple of yards. We'll see how they try to mix it up here on second and long now. So second down and 10 for the Reddies as the ball is spotted at the 43-yard line. 447 and counting left here in the third quarter. As the Reddies will send three wide to the far side, two to the near side as Dallas Black is in the, shot, in the shotgun. Black looks to throw. Now he'll go up the left side. He'll be taken down for a sack. Getting with the sack was Dominique Jones for Emporia. And that is going to be a big loss. He's going to lose six yards on the play. And that will bring a third down at 16 down for the Reddies. Yeah, you got to think of something creative here on third and long. Down 22 to nothing. Getting to the part of the third quarter where, you know, it's the last, potentially the last game of the season. Got to go for it on all accounts. Third and 16 as Black's in the shotgun, looks to throw, steps up in the pocket, now goes to the left side, fires it downfield and overthrows Javante Mack. And he just uh, he threw a way over Mack, and, and Mack was wide open in the middle of the field, he was, and he was standing at the first down marker, and they had nowhere to go with it. And it yeah. looks like the Reddies are going to stay on the field. Mack just kind of sat there in that soft zone coverage, and he found an opening. Just got to put it down just a little bit, give him a chance. He, even jumping, he wouldn't have been able to catch that one. So Andrew Black is going to stay in that quarterback here on fourth down. Fourth and 15. Mack comes in motion from left to right. As here's a pooch kick now by Black. And boy, he put a foot into it. Heck of a kick he there. Kicked it all the way down inside the 10, rolls inside the wall. It was losing steam as it hit the five, but it just had enough to roll into the end zone. That was a, I want to consider putting him on the punt team today. No joke. That, I mean, <laughs> he kicked that ball from the 38-yard line and and pooched it. I mean, that wasn't even a full kick. That was just a, a you know a half kick pooch. Uh, that that was a big time kick as. That was a 40-yard 40 40-yard 40 uh, kick for, excuse me, that was actually a, let's see here. That would be a 62-yard kick with a roll. Is that scale 30 years old over there? Hey, uh, this is my this is my old-school scale that gives me quick <laughs> down and distance. I like that thing. I like it, too. It yes. just looks like it was printed back when yes. the printer was invented. Yes, first and ten for Emporia. Here's a run straight up the middle by... Nolt, and he'll pick up a couple yards on the play, and they'll bring up second down. Yeah, look for Emporia here just to run it as yeah. much as possible, trying to run that clock down and and get out of here with a win, up 22 to nothing. You don't want to risk any more interceptions seeing your Harlan Hill finalists already throw two in this game. Well, he actually picked up five yards. He dove for an extra couple, so it's second and five now for Emporia. As Wilson's in the shotgun, he's going to put Nolt to his left side. Going to hand the ball off to Nall, who stretches it out wide to the right, but he'll be tackled immediately at the line of scrimmage as bringing him down to the tackle was Gary Vines. 
And so he'll gain about a yard on the play to bring up third down and four for Emporia. You know, you got to give a lot of credit to their running backs today. RJ holding on to the football, and we've seen fumbles on the Henderson State side happen plenty of times. They've only fumbled and lost one time today, and that was early in the game. They've really done a good job securing it in the second half. The Reddies have fumbled the ball six times. They've lost it four. Emporia's fumbled it twice and only lost it once. 243 and counting. 22 to nothing. Emporia leads Henderson. Wilson's in a shotgun. Takes a shotgun snap. Hands it off to Nolan. Nice move in the backfield, but he's finally taken back down by Gary Vines. And that is the second tackle for loss for Gary Vines in the ball game. And that brings a fourth down to Emporia. That was a good job by Vines and that defense knowing what they're trying to do. If they're going to try to run the ball and run it out the rest of the game, then stack the box and try to slow them down. And maybe if you get a chance, try to throw a hand in there and pop the football out. You're deep into their own territory right now. So it looks as if Emporia is going to keep their offense on the field on this fourth down and six. Uh, look for a pooch kick here. They've done it before. They did it a little bit we'll see ago. if uh, Wilson takes a a shift back here. That's what he did last time. And now he's going to call a timeout. Yeah. He'll call a timeout with a minute 53 left. I think he, I think they were just letting the, the play clock run down to, to waste as much time off the clock as possible. As the rain is really coming down now here at Carpenter Haygood. It's 22 to nothing. Emporia leads Henderson. Let's head down the sidelines for a Fat Boys Fine Food Sideline Report. Hunter. Yeah, guys, rain really starting to come down a little bit harder now. Probably the hardest it has all game long is you can visibly see all the, the puddles here on the sideline behind us. So we're going to be careful with the, the team walking around down here. Hunter, what's the, uh, what's the mood like on the sideline right now? Well, these guys definitely still be able to play out of this offense. has just got to get the ball and, and put it in the end zone, guys, and hopefully get good field position here, some of the better field position they've gotten all game. Thank you, Hunter. As Hunter Lively's down there braving the elements on the sidelines as there's a minute 53 to play here in the third quarter of play. 22 to nothing, and Poyer leads Henderson State. Got Mack and Snap back to receive the ball. Snap had a good return earlier. Uh, it was negated, or at least moved back because of a block in the back. We'll see if they can get one here. Mark Chouse, who left the game in the first quarter, is down with an ankle injury, so he's he's done for the rest of the game. As a Punts away, and Joseph snaps right there to make the catch at the 41-yard line. He'll be driven backwards. And so that's where Henderson State will have it, first and 10. You know, you, you got to give Emporia State a lot of credit. What they just did was they snapped the ball, and it was almost a floating snap. They didn't want to risk it flying over the head or even through the hands of the punter, so they just kind of floated it back to him to allow him to secure the ball. So the Rays will have the ball at the 42-yard line where the official spot is. With a minute 42 to play in the third quarter, it's 22 to nothing, Emporia leads Henderson. As the Reds are going to line up, two wide to the near side, and one to that far side. Hardison, that's still Andrew Black in the shotgun. Black's going to fake the handoff now, keeps it himself straight up the middle. He's going to pick up about two yards on the play, but we've got a penalty flag down that far side. It was thrown after the snap, so... It looks like it'll be an illegal formation against the Reddies. See what the official call is. Personal uh, foul face mask. Uh, it was an early face mask then, and so that's going to be a first down for the Reddies. Is we we don't have an official mic for the uh, for the head the head official Dan Rank and his mic went out before the ball game even started. So 15 yards. Yeah, the Reddies are going to get a. a Nice first down out of this. Much needed at this point with a minute 33 and counting in this game to go, or in this quarter to go. So now the ball is going to be spotted at the 41-yard line in Emporia territory. Here's the handoff. It's off to Rodney Bryson. No, Andrew Black keeps it, and he'll be taken for a loss on the play. Well, I guess say he got back to the original line of scrimmage. He may have gotten back, but uh, I would err on the side of a loss, if, if anything. And, no, they're going to say he got back to the original line of scrimmage. So that will bring up second and ten for the Reddies. They're going to give him forward progress on that one, even though he was met by a host of defenders who were pushing him back. So not a big loss on the play for the Reddies here as it's second and ten. Andrew Black in the shotgun. Going to fake the handoff. Now give it off to Chappelle. Oh, he got hammered at the 41-yard line. He's down the turf. Trey Dickerson there with a big hit. And yeah, Corey Chappelle's down the turf, and he's he's hurt. That was and it was a clean hit all the way. Dickerson led with his shoulder, but.
they went right to the rib cage of Corey Chappelle and and, and they tried to go with a, a swing route on that near side and now Chappelle's up and walking off under his own power but he's not feeling too good and this team cannot afford more injuries at this no. point RJ they've already lost their share of starters for, for on both sides of the ball and two at receiver in this game alone so Andrew Black on third down, it's third and ten, he'll line up in the shotgun, looks to throw, he'll roll to the right side, Black now pulls it down, looks to run, Black still on his feet, makes a move at the 45, or uh, excuse me, the 35, and dives forward, and he takes it inside to the to the 24-yard line, where it'll be fourth down and three for the Reddies, and you can imagine at this point they're going to go for it with 29 seconds to play in the third quarter. Now Black is elusive. He was able to sidestep a couple defenders there to pick up some extra yardage. Black tried with the hard count. Now that didn't work, so he looks to the sideline. Two receivers to each side with Cole behind him. Going to take the snap. Looks to throw. Steps up in the pocket and he gets it off to Jaquan Cole and it hits off his hands. He was right there at the first down marker. And that's going to be a turnover on downs for the Reddies. It looks like another Reddies down right now. It looks like offensive lineman Charles Corn is down as he's hobbling off the field. Yeah, on that play, Black wasn't able to really get his, everything on that pass as he was being pulled down from the back. And so that's why the ball was just a little short, a tough catch for Cole to make. He was on the ground trying to make it and just not able to secure it. So important gets the ball back with five seconds to play in the third quarter. And now Korn, you can kind of see him on the sideline. He's holding a knee. Boy, and, and the Reddies right now at linemen, they're getting thin. The Reddies now at name of position, they're getting thin. Brent Wilson takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Nolt, straight up the middle. Nolt goes all the way out to nearly midfield as he takes the ball out to the 46-yard line. That's going to do it for the third quarter of play. We head to the fourth quarter, put those four fingers up. The ladies have a lot of work to do. They trail 22 to nothing on the Henderson State Sports Network. We need to get an idea to fire. Dreams drive each of us. Whether you want to be an accountant or a teacher, a nurse or an artist, ambitions can become a reality at Henderson State University. We empower. At Henderson, we empower students with the tools to excel. We offer more than 70 majors, including the state's only four-year aviation program and a variety of academic support resources. In addition, we offer classes at the new Hot Springs Downtown Education Center. You achieve. A student-centered focus makes Henderson more than a university. We're a community that prepares you for a successful career and life. To learn how Henderson can transform your aspirations into lifelong achievements, visit hsu.edu. Hey, Ready fans, this is Ryan McDonald. Thanks for listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. And off the ball goes straight up the middle on first down, and he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage for Emporia as we're just underway here in the fourth quarter. 22 to nothing, Emporia leads Henderson State. I'm R.J. Hawk alongside Chris Kane. Hunter Lively down the sideline as it has rained all ball game here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. Second down, and they're going to say Nolte actually lost one, so they'll bring up second down and 11. Wilson's in the shotgun, has two backs in the formation as... Nolte is his main back, is the lead back anyways, with Brown in front of him. Wilson takes a shotgun snap, gives it off to Nolte, straight up the middle, finally being taken down by Grady Allison. And so that'll bring up a third down for Emporia after they pick up seven yards on the play to bring up third down and four. Yeah, Landon Nolte this game already rushed for more than 80 yards. His average on the season per game was only 42.8, so him exceeding that by double in this one. Third down for Emporia. 13.50 to play. As they look to the sideline. Wilson claps his hands together, looks to the defense, hands the ball off to Nolte. Nolte straight up the middle, and he'll pick up the first down. No, they're going to actually say he's, he may be short. Not, Maybe uh, by a half a yard. I thought the initial push got him the first down. And 
Uh, regardless, I'd be shocked if they didn't go for it here. It's, yeah. it's worked for them throughout the game. And Solo brings up fourth and one as Wilson's in the shotgun, has two backs in the backfield, one on either side of him. Two receivers in the formation to the near side. He'll hand the ball off to Brown. Brown straight the middle, and he gets a second effort push, but I think they stop him on fourth down. Yeah, they're going to mark him just about a half a yard shy. That looks like the ready stop and play on fourth down, and they get the football back at the 44-yard line. No surprise they didn't go back to Nault. He's been the, the guy that's really been uh, effective in those short yardage situations for him throughout the game. They go back to Brown, and... Good things happen for the Reddies here. We'll see if they can capitalize on the turnover on downs. And Andrew Black going to be back in at quarterback. Haven't seen Hardison now for the past two series. Yep, so it's first and 10, ball to 44, 13 minutes to play. Hands the ball up to Jaquan Cole. Cole straight up the middle, has running room, out to the 40, in the corner of the territory, to the 30, 35, 20, down to the 15, and that's where he runs out of bounds. Best run of the day for Jaquan Cole as they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Talk about a spark for this offense. You know, Andrew Black, that's what he gives you, the threat of the run that the, the defense has to watch out when the read option's in play. They played the read option there. He gave it to Cole, and Cole made him pay for it by extending the drive deep into Hornet territory. Andrew Black in the shotgun. Has Jaquan Cole behind him. Takes the shotgun snap, works the throw, gonna throw it into the end zone, the snap, and it's in and out of the hands of snap. On the coverage that time, it was Trey Dickerson, and snap just had it bounce off his chest. Yeah, but just the wet hands. Yeah. He had the separation, too. He, he got behind the defender there. He just couldn't couldn't haul it in. Well, you know, and snap doesn't wear gloves. Like, like a lot of these receivers, uh, he's old school. He, he doesn't wear the gloves, and, and you can tell that time the ball just slipped off his hands. I like the play call there, going uh, going for the score after a big run. Black looks to throw, going to his right side. It has Jaquan Cole at the 19, still on his feet. Jaquan still diving forward out to the 15-yard line, where he's going to pick up two yards on the play, and that'll bring up third down at eight for the Reddies. On third down here, you're obviously within field goal range, but down 22 to nothing with 12 minutes left to play. You know, almost have to consider four down territory, even though you'd oh, like yeah. to get just anything on the board that you can. You know, I don't even see Dallas Hardison on the field. I don't, I, we need to check it with Hunter to find out where Hardison is. Andrew Black stands at the 20-yard line on third down. Now looks to throw across the middle, and it's off the hands of Snap once again. He was running a slant pattern and just couldn't connect, so now we bring up third down. Hunter, have you seen where uh, Dallas Hardison is? I'm actually looking for him right now, fellas, and I, I'm not sure if I see him either. <laughs> I was kind of looking down the field, and I didn't know if Hardison may have gotten hurt or something, but I, I don't see Hardison anywhere on the sidelines. And so now Houston Ray is going to come on for the field goal as it's going to – There's him. Hardison. He's on the sidelines right there. Well, they're going to spot the ball at the 22-yard line, so it's going to be a 32-yard kick for Houston Ray from the right hash. Snaps back, holds down, and the kick is up. And good, the Reddies are on the board. The Reddies are on the board at the 11.48 mark. It's 22-3 on the Henderson State Sports Network. Our D time. Eight Ready Apparel souvenirs stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. For your convenience, the Ready Bookstore is open before every Ready football game. And students save money on textbooks at the Ready Bookstore. Where you can purchase, rent, and sell back textbooks every day. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday. We also have HSU apparel for kids, gift items, and alumni items. Find us on Facebook at Ready Bookstore or online at www.hsubooks. Here's Coach to tell you about his latest recruiting class. Well, this class is a program changer. These young men are a tremendous football program athletically, academically, and socially. And that five-star receiver had all the charges dropped. The cops plucked him at 71 in a 30-mile-per-hour zone on a bicycle. Congratulations, Coach. Maybe you should speed on down to Hot Springs and reward yourself with dinner at one of our great restaurants. Hot Springs has all the fun. Follow Hot Springs on social media or plan your trip at Visit Hot Springs. This is Scott Maxfield. Welcome back to Ready Football on the Henderson State Sports Network. A five-play, 41-yard drive in a minute 14 for Henderson State. 
And they finally get on the board with 11.48 to play in the game. It's 22-3 in play. I don't remember that. Drive brought to you by Smart Buick Ford. Next time you need to purchase a vehicle, make the Smart Drive to Smart Buick Ford in Malvern. And so now Houston Ray is going to come on to kick off as we go from right to left of your radio dial. The Rays have a lot of work to do, but they're finally on the board as Ray sticks a foot into it and it sends it down into the end zone where Poirier is going to get it first and 10 with 11.48 to play here in the first half. Here's the thing, Chris. I mean, 22 to 3 is not out of it, just terribly out of it. I mean, granted, with the way the Rays have played, they're out of it. But, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lead that's just too too hard to overcome, if you think about it. I well, mean, no, especially in these conditions, yeah. because these conditions, turnovers happen more frequently. So if you get a turnover right here in, in their own territory, and then you look at putting maybe a touchdown on the board or returning it for a touchdown, then, of course, you can break the game wide open. You know this, Emporia State is going to try to run the football. Yeah. And with that being said, you've got to do anything you can to try to pop the football out of these running backs' hands. They've done a really good job at securing it so far this game, but you got to try to force something here, because time are getting desperate. This could be the last one of the season. If it was 42-3, it'd be tough to come back from. That's for sure. No here's, question. Here's the first and 10 from the 20. Wilson's going to hand it off to Nolt. Nolt goes straight up the middle and he's dropped for a three-yard gain. And so that'll bring up second down and seven for Emporia. Checking on some scores from around Division II football. It is West Georgia defeating Valdosta State 27-20. Northwestern Missouri in the fourth quarter leads Humboldt State 47 to nothing. And then Slippery Rock leads Assumption 41 to 39. Almost brought to you by Southwest Sporting Goats. Second down and seven. 11-12 to play as Nolan gets it. He goes straight up the middle and is down to the 30-yard line. Pick up a two on the play, and that's going to bring up third down for Emporia. And it's going to bring up third down and about five yards to go. Oh, this will be interesting to see what they try to do. It's third and manageable. Uh, they, didn't, they haven't passed the ball well today, as we've mentioned, but they've passed it well enough to at least extend it, maybe, or at least get a first down from five yards out. But they're trying to run this clock down, RJ. They might try to just run it here again with Nolt. So Wilson takes a snap, hands to Nolt. Nolt up the left side has the first down. And Moore, as he takes that to the 40-yard line, I think they're going to mark him down at the 39-yard line. And he picks up the first down for Nolt today. He's just run like a man with a mission. I believe that'll put him over the, uh, yeah, the century mark there. 25 attempts for 102 yards, 104 yards. Yeah, he's 104, but no touchdowns yet. Here's the first and 10 from the 39-yard line. As Wilson comes in, the shotgun puts Nolt to his right. Nolt carries it up the left side. He'll stretch it wide to the left. Now Nolt's got running room. Has to be one man. That's Kendrick Burns. And he finally gets knocked out of bounds after picking up the first down. And so a new set of downs for Emporia. And yeah, Nolt, one of those low center of gravity backs. Not exactly. A, he's not a tall back like Brown, Antonio Brown, one of the bigger guys. So he's tough to bring down if you're trying to tackle him high. And in these rainy conditions, you can just slip right off of him. So it's first and 10 as the ball is going to be spotted at the 48-yard line in Henderson territory. Wilson's going to be the shotgun. As he'll put Nolt up to his right side. He'll hand the ball to Nolt. Nolt takes it left side now, cuts it back at the middle, and he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It'll be a pickup of four yards on the play. It brings up second down at six. Oh, Emporia State right now just kind of imposing their will. In Henderson State knows what they're going to do. They know they're going to just run the ball, but that front offensive line for Emporia State, RJ, big offensive line, 6'3", 6'4". Even the, the shorter guys are over 300 pounds and another 6'4 tackle, so they're doing a good job pushing the line right now and getting that push to extend every run that those backs are getting. Second down and six as Brown's in the game now running back for Emboya, and he'll take the handoff. He goes right side. He'll pick up a couple on the play to bring up third down and about two for Emboya. And you know, just looking, Landon Nolt, this by far is his best rushing game of the season. The most yards he has rushed for this season before this was against Northeastern State back on September the 22nd, which he ran 18 times for 88 yards. In this game, 
He's carried the ball 27 times for 121 yards. Yeah, coming into it, we wondered how the rushing attack would do because it wasn't a focal point of the offense. Well, when needed, this running attack can, can do just fine against just about anybody. So it's third down and three. Ball's at the 41. Wilson stands at the 45. Takes the shotgun snap, gives it to Brown. No, he'll fake it. Wilson keeps it. He loses yards on the play. He loses two yards. And that'll bring up fourth down for Emporio. And it'll knock him back to about fourth and five now. And you would imagine Emporio is going to keep the ball on the field and let that clock continue to run. Well, defensive coordinator uh, Matt Gordon and uh, Jeff McCurney both, I think, sending the blitz and agreeance on that one, knowing they're going to try to run the ball. And... It ended up being uh, a good good call. Now we'll see what they try to do here, if they try to go for it or if they pooch it again. Well, he's lined up five yards deep, that being Wilson, on fourth down. He's stepping back. Yeah. It's going to be a pooch. Yeah, he'll step back and he'll pooch that thing down all the way inside the 10. It's going to get a nice hop and continue to roll inside oh, the five, yeah. all the way inside the two and down at the one-yard line. Just the way things have gone today for the Reddies. Uh, One of those days. Well, hold on. There's a flag down at the line, and they're saying uh, Henderson thinks it's on Emporia. Well, let's let's see what they say. As the penalty is going to be a chop block on Emporia, and. Now you got to come over here and talk to Coach Max. Yeah. Like, what do you want to do? What are your options here? Can you can you have him re-kick it or extend the ball just from where it ended up? I, I think they, I think that's what they're saying is they're going to say it's a chop block against Emporia, and the crowd mic, the ref mic's not working. I think they're going to mark it off from the the, from the where the ball yeah. ended up. So it'll be a, a mark off from the one. See how many yards it gives him here. Ball is going to be placed at the 15-yard line or 16-yard line. So that'll certainly give the Reddies a little more room to work. Is that they were looking to be pinned back all the way at the one now with a little breathing room. So Andrew Black still in the game for the Reddies. Stands at the 10-yard line in the shotgun. Black, three-step drop, looks to throw. Now rolls out, he's under pressure, he'll be taken down. He'll be taken down and carried into the end zone, and the Reddies are going to lose a lot of yards. They're going to say that his forward progress stopped on the five, so a loss of ten on the play. It's actually more than that. It's actually going to be a loss of 11 on the play. And so... Because the field last spot was at the 16. Oh, so yeah. now uh, Black's going to stand at his, at his own end zone. He hands it off to Quan Cole. Cole up the right side. Still on his feet out to the 11 yard line. Picks up some yardage on the play. That's about six yards. And so that'll cut into that second and 21 and brings them third down for the Reddies. Yeah, Cole did a good job trying to get back to the line there, but still not enough to, uh, to give you many options here on third and now. Third and 15. Well, here's the third down and 15 as Black goes straight up the middle with it. And actually, that's Jaquan Cole up the middle with it. He picks up about a yard. And here's fourth down for the Rays. And, and you got to punt the ball. I mean, you can't, you can't give up this good a field position. No, it doesn't look like they're going to do that unless no. they pooch it again. Yeah. Black staying in the game and just changing out a few personnel, putting in more receivers, and out comes Cole. 5.50 and counting left in the ball game. And Andrew Black's going to line up in the shotgun. He'll put Mack in motion from left to right. He'll take the shotgun. Now pooch kick, and he gets a high wobbler. Great kick. That's going to bounce at the 45 in Emporia territory and take another bounce all the way to the 42-yard line. And that's where Emporia is going to get the football first and 10 with 5.28 to play here in the ball game. I, I tell you, we've got better punters at quarterback than we actually have a punter. Uh, he's certainly getting a nice boot on the last two, on the last two pooches, and he, at least getting some favorable bounces, you know. I mean, I don't, well, Dallas Hardison last week was, was punting. I can bring Hunter Lively in on this conversation. I think it's fair to say, Hunter, we've got two really good quarterback punters. 
say no, no, most definitely the Cardinals. I mean, just moving in the last two weeks between Dallas and Andrew Wright, uh, they've really placed the ball in some ideal situations. I mean, who would ever thought we're sitting there talking about your quarterbacks being, you know, such a good punter? But, well, you know, between Andrew Black and Dallas Hardison, they both really excelled at punting the football the last two weeks. Brett Wilson back in the ball game for Emporia. He hands it off to Nolt. Nolt going to take it up the left side. Has running room. He's got open space at the 30. 35, he's gone. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Oh, caps off on your rear day for yeah. Landon Nolt. Already had 121 rushing yards. You know, that and no touchdowns, but now that adds a touchdown and, you know, an extra 45 yards. And that's his 28th carry of the day. 28th carry of the day, and, and they have now extended this thing to 28-3. As coming on to kick for Emporia is going to be Austin Morton. He'll kick the extra point. Turnovers, turnovers, and turnovers, and really their rushing attack. Snaps down, kicks up, and it's good, and Emporia and Ali Henderson, 29-3 on the Henderson State Sports Network. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward in treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. Arkadelphia Super Smiles is located at 280 Professional Park Drive, Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. Ready for another season of hard-hitting game day parties? Hunger is ready, ready to strike without mercy. Whether you join the party at a tailgate or in your own living room, Subway Catering's lineup includes giant subs, sandwich platters, cookie platters, chips and drinks, everything you need to crush hunger and score a touchdown for football fans everywhere. So get in there. Subway, eat fresh. Catering orders must be placed 24 hours in advance. See participating store for details. Ready fam, this is Joseph Snap. Thanks for listening to Henderson State Football on the Ready Sports Network. Well, Justin Marche is going to put a grounder on the ground. It'll land in the hands of Jacoby Lewis. Actually, that's actually for the Reddies. I believe that's out to Kalen Peters, who lost the handle on it. It was fumbled down back inside the 25-yard line, but the Reddies jumped back on it. And so they'll have a first and ten. Now we've got an official timeout on the field in that last drive. One play, 58-yard run by Landon Nolan. Yeah, that, that was your smart Buick Ford scoring drive. The next time you need to purchase a vehicle, make the smart drive. The smart Buick Ford in Malvern. Dalton on the day, 28 carries, 179 yards and a touchdown. He's having a career day. And, you know, we came to this ball game saying how they really didn't have much of a running attack. And that's all they've done. They're, uh, they're all world quarterback. Brent Wilson stole the ball 6 of 14 for 63 yards and two interceptions. Yeah, they, they adjusted to the weather today. And uh, here's Mack catching the football out of the backfield. And he takes it past the 30 and steps out of bounds. So the Reds are going to pick up about five yards of the play. But they're going to say he stepped out at the 29. So it's four-yard pickup. And it's now second down and six. You know, maybe it's not that they didn't have a running attack. They just didn't need one until today. Yeah. Here's the second down attempt by Andrew Black. He'll throw it out to Snap, who catches it at the 40. Snap catches it and takes it down at the 44-43 yard line. Where it's a first down for the Reds with 4.48 to play. 29 to 3. And Boyle leads Henderson. Andrew Black in the ball game for Dallas Hardison. As Black stands in the shotgun with Cole to his right. Actually, that's Kalen Peters. Now he throws it to Peters. Peters in the flats, catches it. Now he has some running room. Now at the 49-yard line. And we're going to say his knee touched down to 48. So it's a pickup of five yards on the play. And that'll bring up second down and five for Henderson. 420 and counting now. But he's down 29 to 3. Dallas Black in the shotgun. Takes the handoff, now keeps it himself, straight up the middle, and he's about two yards shy of the first down as he picks up three yards on the dive. And so that'll bring up third down and two for Andrew Black. Reddies are about to eclipse the 100-yard total yards mark for this ball game as they, just before the last drive, had 97 total yards of offense, and they now hit 100 
total yards of offense, one of the lowest outputs of the year. Andrew Black puts in motion. Jo Joseph Snap from right to left. Now Black going to take the handoff. No, he hands it off to Rodney Bryson. Bryson straight up the middle, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and that brings up fourth down. Got to run downfield. You, you got to run north and south and not east and west. And that's one thing Rodney hasn't been able to really grasp sometimes this season. And so that will bring up third down and two now for Henderson. We'll see what they try to do here. They try to go back to the run game. Uh, two yards out, maybe black on a scramble would be a, a play call here that could extend the chains. Now, now it looks like we've got a false start on Joseph Snap, who stepped off the line of scrimmage. He was trying to communicate with the, the line judge, yeah. but the line judge wasn't communicating back and then just throws a, a penalty flag. That, he, that's bad officiating. I, as a former official, at which, which I did, you got to communicate with the with the receivers, and Joseph Snap was clearly trying to communicate with him, and he wouldn't communicate back. Yeah, Snap wasn't even looking at the ball or looking yeah. at, the, at the play. He was trying to talk to the ref to yeah. make sure he was he was off the line and where he needed to be, and uh, never got, I guess, the uh, the verbal okay. Yeah. Oh. Now free play. That, that penalty flag is free play. They jump in the end zone. Now Black just throws it downfield and out of bounds, but that'll be a free five yards. So on fourth down, the Raiders will get another go at it. It's offsides against Emporia. That'll put it back to where it was yeah. before the false start. I can try it again. 2.44 to play here in this one as the Reddies trail 29 to 3. Well, tough day for the Reddies here, RJ, as they win their first playoff game, the first playoff game for the GAC last week against Sioux Falls and coming against a, an Emporia team from the MIAA, which is known to be a great conference and not able to hold on to the ball today. That's going to be the storyline uh, and the big takeaway from this game. And it looks like now they're going to be trying the... Uh, uh, they're going to go the with, uh, no, they're going to go with their power package with Ryan McDonald as the lead back. They they brought in the jumbo set. Coming in motion is James Jackson and Ryan McDonald takes a shotgun snap. He'll run it straight up the middle and he'll be close to the first down and does get the first down on second effort. And so it's a first down for the Reddies as he takes the ball out to the 46-yard line. Man, a good job by Ryan McDonald. They call it the Wild Mac. He scored nine touchdowns and had gains of enough yards for first downs on 11 occasions. Make that 12 after that play. So it's first and 10, ball at the 46, 225 and counting now. Boy, just love to see the Reds get one touchdown. Yeah. Andrew Black in the shotgun, takes a three-step drop, looks to throw. Now has snap over the far side on the near side and goes just out the outstretched arm of, of snap. And so now that'll bring up second down and 10. He had snap open. He just overthrew him on the sideline there. 2-12 left here in the ball game, 29-3. I guess it could be worse. I, I mean, as... Northwestern Missouri is just blasting Humboldt right now, 47 to nothing. Here's Andrew Black throwing the ball over the middle, and Javante Max there to make the catch on first down as he gets it down inside the 35-yard line, down to the 33, and it's another first down for the Reddies. Oh, great catch by Mack there in, in coverage. There was a zone, and there's about three Hornets surrounding him, and he came down with the ball before getting tackled. Here's the first down attempt by Black. Black steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to run with it. Black at the 30-yard line and down at the 29. As he'll pick up about four, maybe five yards of the play. And so that'll bring up second down and six for Henderson State. I was talking about that Northwest Missouri game, and they're going to play Humboldt State. Or they're playing Humboldt State right now, and they lead 47-7 with two minutes to play. A minute 30 left here in this one. Black's alone in the backfield. Has three wideouts to the far side. Now throws it across the middle to Javante Mack. Mack down at the 19-yard line. Picks up another first down. A minute 21 with a stop clock. But he's going with hurry-up motion right now. Trying to get a touchdown. I just want to end with a score here just to end off the season on something positive after a game that you want to forget. 
Going in motion for the Reddies is Rodney Bryson. He splits out wide right to the right side. Now Andrew Black under pressure. Steps up in the pocket now. Throws it back to Mack, who was at the 15. Or the mark of the 16-yard line. It's only pick up a four as we're down to 55 seconds to play. Pick up a four yards on the play. It's second down for Henderson. Andrew Black in the shotgun. Two wide each side. Bryson in motion to the right side. Now here's a tunnel screen to Joseph Snap, who is carried all the way down to the 12-yard line. Pick up a four yards as we're down to 35 seconds to play. Third down for, for Henderson. And there's 25 seconds to play. Black in the shotgun. Black takes the shotgun snap, looks to throw. Rolls to his left. Got to get rid of it. And he's going to throw it out of bounds with 15 seconds, 14 seconds to play. And it's fourth down. Well, down to the final play, possibly for the 2015 season. As the fans over at Emporia on their feet, clapping and smiling as they should be. Their team played a heck of a ball game today, but it was also because of the turnover bug. The Reddies killed themselves. I yeah, mean, no I, I would have loved to have seen what this game would have been like without the driving rain today. I think it would have been totally different yeah. for both sides, even. Here's Black throwing it up to the right side to Chappelle, and it's intercepted. That's a fitting way to, to, to finish this game as Andrew Black throws an interception. That is the, what is that, the seventh turnover of the ball game, sixth turnover of the ball game for the Reddies. And that's going to do it with seven seconds to play. The 2015 season is going to come to an end as the Reddies are going to finish the year with an 11 and 2 mark. With one playoff win, they were Great American Conference champions. They were picked third to start this year in the Great American Conference. And they ended up winning the conference and going two rounds deep in the playoffs. And uh, Emporia, on the, other, on the other hand, they're going to move to 11-2 on the year and go on to play in conference rival Northwestern Missouri in the semifinals of the Region 3 playoffs. And that's going to do it. The clock strikes zero, and your final score, it is Emporia State 29, Henderson State 3, and the way to Hunter Wiley is going to be down with Coach McInerney on the sideline. Coach Maxwell's got to go to a post-game press conference, and so we'll speak with uh, Coach McInerney after the ball game. And both teams making their way on the field to congratulate one another, and just, uh, boy, I tell you, once again, I'm not going to say the Reddies would have won this game, but I would have loved to see it. Let's head down to Hunter right now on the sideline. Hunter. Coach McInerney, the uh, team kind of dug themselves in the hole there in the first half with all the turnovers. Really, uh, the turnovers and weather are main issue today. Your thoughts on the game? Uh, it was a hard-fought game. We had a great season. We had a great, uh, you know, Coach Maxwell did a great job with this team. It just hurts right now. And, uh, you're exactly right. We dug ourselves a little bit of a hole, but we, we did our very best. Got to give credit to Emporia State, and we just got to fire up and get ready for next year. Well, this group of seniors, Joseph Snap, Mark Chouse, Devontae Mack, all those guys really played well all season long. Your thoughts on their leadership for this team over the course of the last year? Tremendous. I can't tell you what they meant to our team and how proud we are of them. Coach, thank you. You got it, my friend. And that is Assistant Coach, Coach McInerney after um, – a disappointing 29 to 3 loss to Emporia, and right before I was trying to finish my point, I I'm not saying the Reddies would have won this game, Chris. I, I really I'm not saying that at all. But it would have been a much different ball game if you didn't have this driving rain. I, look, I understand that both teams had to play in it. Uh, it just so happens that it affected the Reddies a little bit differently than what it did uh, Emporia. And and um, congratulations to Emporia. They I mean they played the better game, and they, they deserve to win this game. Now, anytime you have six turnovers in a ball game. Nobody should win the game. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the way it goes. So. Yeah, I mean, nine, including the last one for both teams. you got to credit the running backs for Emporia State. Um, those two guys, not only did Landon Nault have a career day in yardage, but you know him and Antonio Brown holding on to the football in, in a game where it's, it seemed like it was going to pop out at any moment. A lot of credit to them and their efforts today. Well, 29-3 is our final. We've got much more to come on the Slim and Shorty's postgame show right after this on the Henderson State Sports Network. At Domino's, we're more than just pizza, so mix it up with our chicken, stuffed cheesy bread, sandwiches, pastas, or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each, and we'll make stand-up comedy with a robot. Stuffed cheesy bread and my ad have a lot in common. They're both super cheesy. <laughs> 
Tough crowd. Order any two or more of Domino's eight-piece chicken, stuffed cheesy breads, oven-baked sandwiches, pastas in a dish, or medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each.